Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are at Baysmore Hyder Stadium in Valdosta, Georgia, for a very exciting matchup between the West Georgia Wolves and the Valdosta State Blazers. My name is Landon Luke, and I'm here with my colleague, Kawan Cook. Oh, and Kawan, really quick, tell me how you feel about this matchup tonight. Oh, this is a big game, Landon. I'm pretty sure Coach Hall and Coach Bell both circled this game up in the preseason and let their players know this game will mean a lot during the division race. A lot of things on the line here tonight, like you just heard from Kawan, and we are really excited. Fans are filing into Baysmore Hyder, and we have West Georgia against the Valdosta State Blazers up next here on BSU TV. Stay tuned. Here, we are a community of 11,000 individual stories. A place where all doors are open. Your home away from home. Where you will make lifelong connections. And you will never feel invisible. Here, you will write it, research it, sing it, broadcast it, share it, serve it, teach it, nurture, and own it. VSU, over 100 majors, championship athletics, and just far enough away from home. Find out what VSU can do for you. We are back here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Once again, my name is Landon Luke, and I'm here with my colleague, Kawan Cook, and the Blazers have just ran out on the field for this highly anticipated matchup between the West Georgia Wolves and the Valdosta State Blazers. Kawan, the atmosphere is hyped up. How are you feeling about this? Oh, I'm feeling happy to see it. And, of course, I'm really, really, really excited to see the 36th matchup between both of these teams. The Blazers actually hold the, the overall advantage of 23-12, to 12, but the last three matchups have gone wrong for the Blazers, and West Georgia have picked up all three of those wins. But this will be the first, the very, very first for Kerwin Bell's era. And West Georgia did indeed win the coin toss, and they've elected to defer. So Valdosta State and that Blazer offense will get the ball first. And we know a little bit about this Blazer offense, roughly almost halfway through the season here. Um, a little bit of a quarterback controversy going on in the sense that we have Roland Rivers and Adam Robles possibly both getting snaps tonight. Um, how do you think that their uh, games maybe compare and contrast? Well, it's not really a compare and contrast for them, I would say. I would say Kerwin Bell sees a great quarterback in actually both of the quarterbacks. That's why he does this dynamic two-quarterback tandem system. Uh, it actually works pretty well because Roland Rivers is pretty big, as you can, if you've ever seen him. Uh, he, he's pretty mobile other than Adam is, and they're both actually really talented when it comes down to their arms. Well, West Georgia has Eric Autry out getting ready to kick this ball away to the receiving Valdosta State Blazers. Back for the back receiving for the Valdosta State Blazers will be Quaylen Patterson, the 5'9 uh, running back, 195 pounds from Orange Park, Florida. This is a highly anticipated matchup, and we're getting ready for this kickoff here in some Gulf South Conference action football. Indeed, once again, between the West Georgia Wolves and the Valdosta State Blazers, the fans are on their feet. The amplitude is amping up here in this stadium. We are almost underway here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. And it's a little tense here. I can feel the tension in the air, Kawan. There's a lot on the line for both of these teams, particularly interconference. I know, Landon. Actually, it kind of feels weird because I feel like I'm on the field. My hands are wet, and I'm really and excited. And we are underway, and... The kick is right there, shallow into the end zone. It's going to be taken out to about the 20, and he's going to be brought down just shy of the 30-yard line. That's number 30, Jare Demby, the defensive back for the Valdosta State Blazers, and we will see that Blazer offense on the field. And that was a pretty decent return for him. As you can see, he brought it out to, like, the 27-yard line, which is really longer than oh, seven yards more than the actual touchback would be. Blazer offense just shy of the 30-yard line getting ready to set up here. And we know that this West Georgia defense is no push-around unit by any stretch of the imagination. They're In fact, they're averaging 14 points a game scoring on defense. So it will be interesting to see how the Blazer offense handles this. The Blazers line up in a shotgun with a fullback offset, and it's going to be a handoff, a fake handoff up the middle, and the quarterback is going to run and maybe gain about one or two yards, not much on that play there. Yeah, as you can see here, really, really couldn't – get it going. The Lions tried to secure a good block for them, but they got all pushed back. This defensive line unit is pretty talented, I will say, Landon. And Valdosta State has indeed brought Roland Rivers out there on the field first to run this offensive unit, and they're going to line up in a shotgun once again with a fullback offset. 
takes the snap, fakes the handoff, and he's going to run the same play to the other side, and he's going to gain about – it looks close to the first down. Looks like he's going to be a couple yards shy. A, mod a modest gain there, Kawan. Yeah, nice modest gain. I like how to use the running back as a key block right there because without that key block, that play probably doesn't get as much as it gets. Probably a loss of more yards to be exact. But that is a player down right there. We're going to – the Blazers do have Jordan Germany on the field, and we do have an injury on the field, ladies and gentlemen. Hope that young man is okay. The Blazer offense does have Jordan Germany out there right now, and that's very interesting considering that Hollingshed had a little bit of an out an outbreak in the last game that we saw him in here at home against the West Florida Argonauts. Yeah, Hollingshed is a big, big back. Uh, actually, to be honest, he's actually bigger than both of uh, Jordan and also Quaylen Patterson. I'm sorry about that, guys. We're just really, really concerned about the player on the field at the time, so we're trying to see exactly what's going on. And on the field injured right now is number six, Curtis Lindsay, the safety for West Georgia. Well, while, we, while we have a little bit of time here, folks, as the injured man is walking off the field, I wanted to talk to you about VSU TV presents Saturday Fright Special every Saturday at 9 p.m. and midnight. Join host Scarewolf as he leads you through classic monster movies on Saturday Fright Special. Get your friends together and grab some popcorn before the popcorn grabs you. And we will resume play here, folks, after an early injury to number six, Curtis Lindsay from the West Georgia Wolves. Roland Rivers and Germany back once again for the Valdosta State offense as they line up once again in a shotgun with a fullback offset. Rivers takes the snap, and he's going to hand it to Germany, and Germany's going to run out to the outside for a gain of, it looks like, about three, four yards, and it's going to be right there. At, uh, it's going to be just shy. It's going to be fourth down for the Blazers. Inches, Landon, inches. Um, I'm really curious to see why Kerwin Bell didn't put it down the throat, seeing that the last play worked with ease down the throat. But instead, he pushes it to the outside and try to get a little zone blocking scheme going. But, of course, this, this defensive line is really fast, and they get hands on the offensive line and really quick. So it makes it really hard to get to the outside against these boys. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we have a penalty on the field, and it looks like it's going to indeed be on Valdosta State, so that's going to back them up, and we have our first flag of the game, and it's going to be on the Blazers, Kwan. And to be honest, Landon, this is something that I've paid close, close attention. The Blazers actually have struggled in, mo in multiple games with penalties. If they can get these penalties down to, to none, really, but they've already committed one, it would be better for them during the game. Valdosta State getting ready to punt this ball away after going three and out on their first offensive possession. The punt is a sky-high punt. It's going to come down close to the 30-yard line, and it's going to be fair call it right there, and that is where West Georgia and that offense will set up shop. Yeah, this is going to be pretty interesting to see this, this defense going to take on this West Georgia offense led by Will Gardner, a transfer out of Louisville. And Will Gardner has played well for the West Georgia Wolves this season. He's led them down the field multiple times against multiple teams and easily could have come out on top in that North Alabama game. And this West Georgia team very realistically could be undefeated if it wasn't for a missed field goal. But nonetheless, here we are on West Georgia's first offensive possession of the game with Gardner behind center. And they're lined up in a single back formation with three wide receivers to the top of your screen. Gardner takes the snap and he's looking to his left and he's going to throw a short pass and that's going to be a caught and that's going to be a gain of about three or four yards and I'm thinking that's a little bit of a confidence pass, Kwan. Yeah, just to get him going, a little dump off to the seems like the tight end at the time. Both teams running an almost hurry up style offense and West Georgia is not wasting much time at all. They huddle up really quick and they're back on the ball. Gardner's behind center once again. Two receivers to the near side. Gardner takes the snap, and he's going to hand off to number 22, his running back, and he's going to bounce it to the outside, and he's going to get quite a few yards there, and that's going to be close to the first down out of bounds for the West Georgia Wolves. That's number 20. That's number 22, Travis Custis on that run. Travis Custis. This is actually pretty. 
if you can watch here, you can see the guards pulling really hard. It actually gives them an opportunity, a one-on-one -on -one matchup with the running back and the cornerback. And, of course, the running back knows the cornerback for not making the tackle. But also State runs an air raid style offense, and it looks like this West Georgia team is running an almost pro style, but here they line up in a shotgun with two receivers to the near side and one man sent in motion. Will Gardner's looking around and he takes the snap and he's gonna look to his right and he's gonna throw out there, and that is going to be well defended by that Black Swarm defense. Ooh, that there was Larry Murphy with the great pass deflection. See right here, Larry Murphy makes a great break. It almost seems as he picks it off, but can't hold on to the ball, so it is an incomplete pass. Second down and 10 for this West Georgia offense. Two receivers to the near side again, but this time it looks like a pistol formation for Will Gardner. I won't be shocked to see a run right here, Landon. Gardner takes the snap, and he's going to look to his right again and throw out there once again, and that is going to be overthrown just a tad. That's number 11. That right there is number 11, DJ Izell, almost catching that ball, but here it is, third down for this West Georgia third offense. Third and long, something, of course, all both teams are looking to avoid as much as possible, but they did bring, I did see in the formation uh, come in Danico Carter. He's a 6'5 receiver. And to be honest, I won't be shocked that they target him this time. Third and 10 for the West Georgia Wolves. And V State's looking to establish a presence here early for their defense. Gardner takes the snap, and it's going to be a blitz by that V State defense. And Gardner's going to throw down the middle, and that's going to be incomplete. And they're going to call that man right there for pass interference, Kwan. Oh, yes, Landon. And I actually agree with the call. He was a little early that time. If he could have waited like two more seconds, probably been a perfect play. No flag on the play. And they're punting the ball off and giving it back to V State, probably. Second penalty of the game. Both penalties committed by the Valdosta State Blazers. And that's something that. Like you said earlier before, they're going to have to keep that in check if they want to compete with this very tough West Georgia Wolf team. Yes, I do agree. West Georgia's huddling up and getting the play call. It's going to be a first down for this Wolves offense. And West Georgia's catching a break there because so far they've started out kind of slow out of the gates here on offense. Two receivers to the near side, one to the top of the screen. Four men on the line for Valdosta State. A man sent in motion for West Georgia. Gardner takes the snap, and he's going to hand it off. And that is going oh. to be fumbled. And who knows who come up with that at the bottom of the pile. And it looks like the Valdosta State had the ball, and indeed they do. And that is going to be our first turnover of the game committed by the West Georgia Wolves. And just when you think things are going their way, it goes back the other way for the Valdosta State Blazers, Kawan. Yeah, and that's number seven, Egmont Ita Tawu with the the fumble recovery. That ball just sputtered everywhere, to be honest. If you look right here, you can see the handoff went wrong and it just shot forward right into the <laughs> defense of Valdosta State. And all they had to do was pick the ball up and get the ball back for the offense. So our first turnover of the game is committed by West Georgia and Roland Rivers and the Blazers will set up shop at midfield right there on that Valdosta State logo. And Shotgun formation, two receivers to the near side, one to the far. Rivers fakes the handoff, and he's in the pocket. He's looking, he's looking. He's going to throw it down the field. He's got a man wide open, and that is just simply dropped. That's number three, Zay Howard, the six-foot wide receiver out of Sewanee, Georgia. Landon. And that is, that's just a middle error, Kawan. Oh, Landon. He had the time of a lifetime back there. He actually had enough time to sit, read a play, make another play up before he threw the ball. And when he did make the throw, it was actually on the money to Zay Howard, but couldn't pull it in and make a big play for the team. To be honest, he caught that one. He's walking in the end zone. Well, of course, Rivers and this air raid attack by the Valdosta State offense is looking to continue their success and throw the ball a lot, especially carrying over from their last game against Kentucky State, where they just ate the thoroughbreds up throughout through the air. And here we have three receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Rivers takes the snap, and he's going to fake the handoff, and he's going to throw out to his receiver who makes a man miss, and he's going to run all the way down and be brought down right there on the first down marker on the 40-yard line, and that's going to be close. 
Parker. Yes, it is. Very close. And that was a reception by Donovan Bolden, the 5'9 receiver. And see, he fakes the play action and gives it to the receiver on a little court, quick hit route. And he gets up field, makes one miss, and gets as many yards as possible. That also snake takes the snap and Rivers is looking. He's going to throw to the right side and that throw is going to be a little bit low. Second down and 10 for Valdosta State. I'm going to be real with you, Landon. River has to make these throws. They're giving him the opportunity to make them so he has to take advantage. When a team like this gives you opportunities, you take advantage of them to win the game and that's how you beat a team like this. Well, points off of turnovers is indeed going to play a role in tonight's game and it's already playing a role right now. And Really, I, I believe the Blazers need to score on this drive to establish their presence early. Run, the running back's in motion, and Rivers is going to throw out there to him, and he's got a little bit of space, and he's going to cross the 40, the 45, and he's just shy of the 30-yard line, and that's going to be close. That may be a Blazer first down. Oh, just a couple of yards short, but I like how they set that up. It was like a, almost a, a running back screen dump off to Cedric Holland. And that is Cedric Hollingshed on the reception there. That's his first reception of the game, and it's going to be interesting to see how they get him more involved with this offense that likes to switch out a lot of players. Rivers takes the snap. He's fakes the handoff, and he's going to run to the right side, and he's going to cross the 30, the 35, and he's going to dive forward, and that's going to be a first down Blazers. Oh, yes. I love the way they did that that time. Both tackles and the guards made a key block, so to put it one-on-one -on -one with just Rivers and the linebacker, and he made that linebacker miss, I must say. It looks like there's an injured player on the field for West Georgia. Just and another show of the play. As you can see there, the guard makes a great block. It's just Roland Rivers in number four, and of course Roland Rivers gets as many yards as possible on that play to extend it. And I believe that is Ladarius Gallion, the defensive tackle for West Georgia that is injured on the field right now. And while we have a little bit of time here, And while we have a little bit of time here, I'd like to tell you that catch, to catch up with the nation's winningest high school football team every Thursday night at 8 p.m. on Wildcat Tradition, Coach Alan Rodemaker and host Monty Long bring you last week's highlights and keys to the upcoming action under the Friday Night Lights. Wildcat Tradition brought to you in part by VSU TV, Cable Channel 16. Second injury of the game, Kawan. How do you think this impacts the psyche of the West Georgia Wolves? Oh, it impacts them a lot because this is another big lineman that they have been looking to come in and make big plays all game. But he's getting up walking, so it'll be interesting to see if he comes back and play a little bit today. And that is indeed Ladarius Gallion that was injured on that play, but he's up and walking around, and that is definitely a good sign for that young man. Yes, it is. Arsenal Armstrong, the defensive line coach, Austin Armstrong, the defensive line coach for the, for the West Georgia Wolves, have put together a great unit here, and they do a great job of getting a great pass rush and stopping the run when they can. So after the injury timeout, the Valdosta State Blazers are back on the field, and they are ready to hopefully, maybe they can get some points on this drive. It's something that they could really use right now, especially after a costly turnover. Rivers takes the snap, and he's looking. He's going to throw deep, and it looks like he has a man, and – that is unfortunately going to be caught out of bounds. And that was close, Kwan. That was real close, Landon. Actually, I really thought he touched his toes in for at least one or two feet right there to get it. But as you see here, he fakes the play action and sends it deep. It looks like no one's back there, of course, but the corner makes up time. But he couldn't keep two feet in because the ball was a little bit overthrown to see, and as that, you could see. And that was Zay Howard targeted on that play, the six-foot senior from Swanee, Georgia, who's already been mentioned. Rivers is back in the shotgun once again, and he's going to hand off to Cedric Hollingshed, and who's got a hole at the middle, and he's going to bust up the middle, and he's going to be flipped forward close to the 10-yard line, and that's going to be a first down Blazers. Hey, Landon, there that kid goes. I told you he would come out here. Hollingshed with the great run. It's a great block up the middle by number 46, it seems. But once he hits the hole, he hits it hard and gets many yards in the knees for us. The Blazers wasting no time, and it's going to be a handoff again to Hollingshed, who's going to try to bounce around, and he's just going to be stuffed right there at the 10-yard line. No gain. No gain. Bounced off his own blockers would be crazy about it. Thought he would pick up more yards, but couldn't push his body forward to get the extra yard. But he didn't lose any yards, Landon, so that's really good for him. And I believe that's going to be the defensive end, Jason Hatcher for West Georgia, who's in there to make the stop. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side. Rivers looking to the sideline for the play call. 
Hollingshed is still out there. Sends a man in motion. Rivers takes the snap, and he's going to play action, and he's going to look. He's got a little bit of a pocket. He's running around, and he's in trouble, and he's going to fall forward for about two or three yards, and I don't know about you, Kawan, but that probably is not what they were looking for there. Not at all, not at all. I, it seemed to see it was a coverage. As you see here, it probably was the coverage, yep, and the all DBs set on every route, so Roland Rivers couldn't see much open, so he tried to make something out of his legs, but... There were people on top of him, of course, so that shut down all that extra running for him. Third and six for the Valdosta State Blazers looking to get on the board early here in this first quarter after a West Georgia turnover. A lot of the same formations here for the Blazer offense. Probably not trying to show too much of their playbook early. Rivers takes the snap, and he steps back, and he's going to look to his right, then back to his left, and he's got a man open, and that is going to be a touchdown for the Valdosta State Blazers, and that is going to be number 11, Damian Strange, the five foot eleven wide receiver from Williston, Florida, for, on the touchdown catch. As you see here, Landon, it looked like a, just a fade route, come back and throw it, and boy, he was wide open. What was that cornerback doing? And just to give you a quick, since we're doing, give you a quick little bring up the Valdosta donor. Donor Center's doors are always open for blood donations that could save a life. In partnership with the American Red Cross, the VDC takes appointments five days a week for blood and platelet donations. For more information on the center's hours and appointment availabilities, please contact the VDC at 229-241-1141. And that's going to be Andrew Gray that indeed kicks the PAT for the Valdosta State Blazers. And here in this first quarter, it's the Blazers up 7 to nothing on a tough West... Georgia Wolf team. Landon, guess who strikes first? The Blazers. It really <laughs> shocked me, to be honest, because I thought I would see the West Georgia Wolves come out with their powerful offense and strike first. But it seems like the Blazers wanted more right now, so we'll, we'll see as the game progresses. A lot of high emotions, and it was, it was a little chippy before the game that I heard between the Blazers and the West Georgia Wolves. But it's interesting that the Blazers have indeed come out on top first, after, especially after a turnover. That has to affect West Georgia's play going forward, and that's definitely going to be in the back of that offense's mind now. I do agree. Both teams getting set for the kickoff here. And it will be West Georgia receiving after the Blazer touchdown. Beautiful night here in Valdosta, Georgia for some South Georgia football as both teams come out on the field getting ready for this kickoff, the second kickoff of the game. Andrew Gray, who just kicked the PAT, will be kicking off to West Georgia. West Georgia will be receiving. They have two men back, one of those men being number nine, LaMarcus Franks who was one of their stud running backs, Kawan. And that is a dangerous man. They actually are topping the GAC, GSC in punt returns and kickoff returns for a reason because that man back there is dangerous, I must say. And that kick is booted into the end zone, and it's going to be need for a touchback by number 22, Travis Custis, another one of their running backs. West Georgia looking to clean up on offense after a very sloppy first possession filled with, of course, the big, the big mess up being the turnover. But not just that, they, they couldn't move the ball much. And when they were trying to move the ball down the field, they, nobody was catching passes. This so is it'll, true. it'll be interesting to see what they can do here with this offensive style being so different from Valdosta State's as we see Will Gardner and this offense lining up in an I formation. Two receivers to the near side. Gardner takes the snap, and he's going to hand it off straight up the middle, and that's going to be stuffed as the running back falls forward for about two yards. And that seemed to be number 44 on the tackle. Carroll, as you can see here, they, they stopped the wedge and stopped the, the draft. I'm sorry, they do stop the... The moving tackles and guards from getting upfield there. West Georgia lines up three receivers to the far side. Custis goes in motion, shuffling his feet, 
Gardner steps back and he's gonna fire and he's got a man just past the 30 and he makes a man miss and he's at the 40 and look at him go as he runs all the way down to the Valdosta State 40 yard line. That's going to be a big gain through the air. That's number three. Co Walker, the six foot wide receiver. As you can see here, he gets the ball to him quick, makes one man miss. Number 13 has to make that tackle there. It stops him from a big gain. As you can see, he picked up as many yards as he could get off that play. Got to step up there. They have to step up. Well, from one side of the field to the next, or excuse me, from one side of the field to the other side of the field, three receivers to the near side. Gardner sends a man in motion. Gardner takes the snap, fakes the handoff. He's looking. He's going to throw down the field, and that is going to be caught near the five yard line and that's once again Walker on the reception. And Walker is a big receiver for them. And as you can see here, Walker gets off on a clean route. Looks like a corner route to me. Just throws it up. He's beat. He beat the safety deep. Makes the big catch. Gets as many yards as he can and falls. And that's the defensive back Brandon Rowe that was beat on that play. And they're going to have to keep their eye on Walker. That man has speed. A lot of it. He actually led the team last year in receiving yards. Gardner takes the snap and he's just gonna hand it off straight up the middle and that is going to be stuffed and that's going nowhere folks, maybe a gain of one. And this is this is actually pretty shocking to me because coming into this game, I never thought Blazers would stand up to this offensive line, but anything up the middle so far, they have made a statement to this defensive line and let this West Georgia offensive line know that they are here to play tonight. West Georgia does like to run the ball, and it will be interesting to see if Valdosta State can keep this run at bay for the majority of the night as West Georgia lines up once again. And that's a handoff to Custis again, who's going to try to lean forward, and that may be a touchdown, and indeed it is, as he's able to outstretch his, the ball across the goal line, and that is Travis Custis on the touchdown, it and it looks so like this game's going to be tied soon. Well, it's 7-6, to six, the Valdosta State Blazers, as West Georgia's lining up for the point after touchdown. And that's gonna be Hunter, Hunter Heck, or excuse me, Eric Autry to take the PAT. And he kicks it, and it is no good. And that could come back to bite West Georgia Kwan. I do agree with that. It's actually pretty interesting not to see Hunter Heck out there kicking the extra point. But if you go back to the replay, he just shanks it right. Um, like I said, man, I thought I would see Hunter Heck on those on those kicks, but I guess after last week miss against North Alabama, the coach lost a little confidence in Hunter Heck. Maybe so, Kawan. That's a very interesting point. And <sighs> missed field goals can kill you in the long run, especially when a game is coming down to the wire. And, of course, it's still only the first quarter, so we don't know exactly how this game is going to play out yet, but... If we know anything about the matchups between West Georgia and Valdosta State, is usually they're nail-biting games. Now, the past three matchups between these teams, West Georgia has indeed been on top. But the Blazers always battle this team hard. They do. Every time. It's always close. The last meeting was a 27-20 loss by the Valdosta State Blazers in the playoffs last year. Eric Autry is out there to also kick the ball off. So we haven't even seen Hunter Heck on the field yet. And it, it really does go back to that missed field goal in the North Alabama game for this West Georgia team. But that is not our decision to make, as that is not the coach's all. decision to make. Kawan, <laughs> we're just here to talk about it and commentate on it. And that is my true. Friend. As Valdosta State is back to receive this kick from Mr. Autry. And the kick is away. And it's, it's a moderate distance, close just outside of the end zone as it is received. And the man crosses the 20. He bounces off a couple receivers, and he's not even going to make it to the 25. He's going to make it to about the 22, the 23-yard line. And we'll see if Valdosta State rolls Roland Rivers out there once again, or maybe Adam Robles will see some playing time, which I'm sure he will at some point tonight. Yes, I, honestly, after a drive like that, I think they bring Roland Rivers back in and let him keep doing what he's doing. He's getting the job done. I think they like him more because he's more mobile than Adam Robles, to be honest. But we shall see. And indeed, they are going to bring Rivers back on the field. 
as there are three Blazer receivers to the near side and none to the far side. So a type of trips package, so to speak, Kawan, as one receiver lines up close to the line and another is sent in motion. And that's going to be a fake handoff. And Rivers is looking, and he has a man out there in the flat. And that's going to be caught. And he's going to run it down to about the 30-yard line. And that's going to be just shy of the first down, second yep. down for the Blazers. Caught there by Dallas Bartner. As you can see here, he sent him in motion. Seems like nothing's downfield, so he check it down to Dallas Bartner. He picks up his about a good six to seven yard gain. And we all know how important Dallas Baldner is for this air attack that the Blazers like to run. And that's going to be a fake handoff, and Rivers is going to run straight up the middle and dive forward for about three or four yards. I don't know about you, Landon, but that play seemed a little funny. It seemed like he could have picked up a little bit more yards than that, but he didn't, couldn't break loose of that one tackle. And it stops them, but guess what? That is a first down for the Blazers. First down indeed for the Blazers, and last time I checked, that's what you want on offense and football. So, so far, so good on this possession as Rivers lines up once again. He takes the snap, and he fakes the handoff, and he's under pressure, but he's going to throw a bullet to his, to his man at the 45-yard line. And that was Zay Howard on the catch. Shocking. And you can see here coming up, of course, another play action fake. Zips it to Zay Howard. He actually catches the ball this time and holds on to it really, really tight. And I'm glad he does that. It saves him from a, a, a nice little tongue lash from the coach there. <laughs> For sure. Blazers wasting no time as the snap is taken, and that's going to be a handoff, I believe, to Mr. Jordan Germany. And that's a good gain on the ground, a gain of about eight or nine yards. And getting a little chippy down there on the field. As you see here on the replay, everybody get great blocks. Number 46 gets to the second level, and we all know, Landon, when you get to the second level as a blocker, they open up nothing but a beautiful hole for the offensive running back. And that indeed was a hole for Mr. Jordan Germany as he's able to gain about nine yards on that play. Second down for the Blazers. Rivers takes the snap, and he's going to roll out to his right, and he's going to throw, and he's going to throw a Beautiful pass to his wide receiver, and that's going to be a first down for the Blazers just shy of the 40-yard line, and that is, again, Zay Howard on the reception. As you can see here, he rolls out to the right. It's great protection, lets the ball go quickly, and makes a great catch, and that's a beautiful for Zay Howard after making a, a miscue earlier in the game. West Georgia trying to figure out how to stop this Blazer offense who has, for the most part, come out firing on almost all cylinders just under five just under five minutes left here in the first quarter. And there is going to be a flag on the play as Rivers chunks the ball deep, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. And a ball that should have been picked off is indeed dropped. But there is a flag on the play, so we'll listen out for what the head referee has to say. It's laundry all over the field, Landon. <laughs> As many penalties that, that come to mind in my head. Um, seems like a holding in the backfield more than likely. And also... Probably a pass interference, but of course, waiting on the referee's decision. Third penalty of the game. And it's going to be, as I said, it is the third penalty of the game. And the first on West Georgia, as we can see, they were offsides that time. But both play, actually, West Georgia was offsides that time, and it was a holding call on the Blazers. And because of that, both of those penalties offset, and it is first down for the Blazers. So in other words, nothing changes. Let's make that as simple as possible. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and football starts back once again as Rivers is back in a shotgun. Two receivers in the near, one to the far. He fakes the handoff, and he's going to drop back, and Rivers is going to throw, and he's got a man one-on-one. -on -one. And I don't know about that, oh. Kawan, but I really think that should be pass interference. Landon, he got away with one there. To be honest, he had hands on Damian Strange starting at the 10th, about the 30th. But you can see the replay. It's a play action phase, of course. He sees him downfield, lets the ball go. Hey, to me, he's beat. But they didn't call a pass interference. I guess it's because the ball may have been overthrown or over the receiver's head. And that could be the reason of no, no call on that. Second down and 10 for Rivers and the Blazers. Rivers takes the snap, and he's going to look to his left and then look up the middle, and he's going to hit Jordan Germany for a short gain of about two or three yards, and there's a little scruffle on the field, and that's about the second time I've seen that. Yeah, and as you can see on the play, they tried to do a fake bubble, knock it right to the, throw it right to the running back. He picks up 
probably a yard of a gain, Jordan Jeremy. A lot of emotion so far here in this game. I've oh. seen a couple of chippy plays go on, and I think, I think you can agree with me that it's important that both teams keep that in check so that it doesn't affect their play on the field, and it is third down for the Blazers, third and nine. Big third down, big third down. Rivers takes the snap, and he's looking, and he's under pressure. He's going to roll to his right, and he's going to throw down the field, and he has Zay Walker once again on the reception, and it is indeed caught, and that's a first down hey, for the Blazers. Zay Walker puts a foot down right there. As they, as you can see it right here. Roland scans the field, couldn't see much, dumps it off a little short pass to Zay. He keeps one foot in, so that lets you know he knew where the sideline was, and he paid great attention to, to detail right there. Three receivers to the near side, one up top. Rivers takes the snap and he fakes the handoff and it's going to be a quick pass and that's going nowhere. West Georgia all over that pass. And it seems like a loss, but that was a reception by number 83, Donovan Baldwin once again. Looked like a loss of like one yard, seems like. But also State likes to set up their run game off of the pass game as they've done so far here tonight. A lot of passes and then they'll run the ball straight up the middle and so far it's worked for this offense. As the Blazers are lined up once again and Rivers fakes the handoff and he's gonna run straight up the middle and he's gonna try to break a tackle but he's going to be unsuccessful and he's gonna be brought down and it's gonna be a third down. Yeah, it seems like perfect blocks were set up there for him to take it out the middle as you can see here. It was all, all bad, but he turned to all bad play into something as much as great. But it could have been worse, though, to be honest, Landon. Yes, indeed it could, Kawan, as Jordan Germany is going to scamper off the field. And coming onto the field is Anthony Ingram, the 5'10 wide receiver from Jasper, Florida. And it seems like they move news 83 Donovan Bolden to the backfield right now. Very interesting. Not hey. sure if we've seen this yet, Kawan. I've never seen this. <laughs> Rivers takes the snap and he's gonna drop back and he's under pressure again, but he's gonna throw out. And that man you just talked about makes his reception and he's going to be right there just past the first down marker and the Blazers offense is clicking. They are clicking. And you can see here, he surveys the field, makes a quick dump off. He looked like he was beat. He tried to make one move, couldn't make it, but he fought for more yards. That is the key thing. He got north and south when it mattered to get that first down because if he didn't get north and south, Oh, they were stopped short. <laughs> About a minute 20 left here to play in this first quarter in a tightly contested first quarter, the only difference being the missed field goal by West Georgia. But the Blazers are knocking on the door as they are deep in West Georgia territory, and it is first down. So West Georgia is on their heels right now. Rivers takes the snap and he fakes the handoff. He's looking and he's going to throw down the middle and he's just going to overthrow his receiver and that's number 11, Damian Strange, targeted on that play. Yes, it was. And to be honest, it seemed like another pass interference there when Damian Strange put his arms up to go for the ball. Before he even could get his arms up, he was grabbed by one of the defensive backs. But of course, it wasn't called, so I guess it wasn't a, actually a pass interference. Very true, very true. love learning. I believe in service. I am full of passion. I embody sportsmanship. I trust in my resourcefulness. I like balance. That's why I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Division Two. Back at Baysmore Hydro Stadium for VSU TV. My name is Landon Luke and I'm here with Kawan. Cook and it is the score is seven to six in favor of the Blazers at the beginning of the second quarter and so far we've seen a couple penalties but the big story I believe so far is that both teams have committed one turnover that and the missed field goal which is the only reason West Georgia is behind in this game but West Georgia just had a big gain and now they're in Valdosta State territory. Gardner takes the snap and he's going to fake the handoff and look down the field and he's got a man and that is caught at about the 14 yard line. Once again by number three, Zay 
I'm sorry, once again by number three, Clay Walker. If you can see here, the play action fake is set up, and he makes a solid throw right to his receiver, puts it where only his receiver can catch it. He makes the catch, and that's another first down for the West Georgia Wolves. Ball on the 13-yard line, first down for West Georgia. Looks to be a single back formation. Two men are sent in motion. Another man sent in motion. Gardner takes the snap and he's going to hand off. And he's got a little, he's got a hole and he is going to waltz in the end zone. And that's going to be number nine, LaMarcus Franks, on that touchdown for West Georgia. Yeah, and you can see here when they put both of these men on that one side of the sideline, it made it where it was clear. It was a run play to that side. And all they had to do was make two or three key blocks. And wait, guess what? Your running backs walking to the end zone. That's exactly what happened there. Look, and LaMarcus Franks is a very talented back and let you know he's ranked he ranks second in the league with an average of 72.4 yards per game and 362 total rushing yards in five games played. And the extra point is good. And Blazer Nation, are you up for some spooky adventures this Halloween while also giving back to the community? The Langdale, Georgia and Reed Residence Halls will be hosting their best haunt, Valdos to State. Nightmares of the North is back, and it's going to be bigger and better than ever. It will take place October 24th and 25th from 7 p.m. until 10 p.m. The event doubles as a canned food drive that helps out the local community. For more information, please contact the volunteer committee at notvolunteers at gmail.com. Here we are in the second quarter, and this time West Georgia is able to make their point after, and it's 13 to 7, and now West Georgia's on top. Yep. And now... This is when Valdosta must counter. To be honest, to contend with a team like this, you have to counter. Because if you don't, they will run the lead up. It'll be interesting to see that. Especially interesting to see how Valdosta State's going to respond. They were up for the majority of that first quarter, even though it was only a one-point lead. Even having a one-point lead on a team like this, in a game like this, it's, it can get the confidence going a little bit, even if it is early, but all of a sudden you're now behind and it was because of a boneheaded turnover and turnovers are killers in big games. Very, very key. So this is what, what kind of makes me think now, do we see Adam Robles now or do we see Roland Rivers again after something like that? And that'll be something that we'll get to see here momentarily as Valdosta State is back ready to receive this kick after the West Georgia touchdown. Eric Autry is out there ready to kick this ball away. Autry is running up and he boots the ball away. And that's gonna be just shy of the end zone as it is caught at about the two yard line and he's at the 10 yard line and he's and he's dancing all over the field, and that is a huge block on the outside as he's able to turn it up the field at about the 19 or 20 yard line, and that is where Valdosta State will set up shop. Landon, I think I see his mouthpiece out there. As you can see here, he surveys, surveys the field. He takes it as far as right, left as he could, and then is a masterful block right here. And I thought I saw his mouthpiece on the ground over there, Landon, <laughs> to be honest. And here we go again. And maybe that will get this Valdosta State defense up and running a little bit more after that huge hit because even something as small as a huge, or excuse me, not the Valdosta State defense, the Valdosta State offense, I apologize for that. Maybe this will get them going after such a big hit like that. As we Val shall see. As Valdosta State lines up. Rivers is still out there at quarterback, and he takes a snap, and he's going to hand it off to, I believe, Hollingshed, who is going to run it for about two yards. Yeah, I think I won't be shocked to see the bigger back for the rest of the game due to the fact of how big this defensive line and this linebacker core of West Georgia is. I think they're looking for somebody who's going to pick up more yards because of his height. Maybe he can fall forward for two or three yards, anything is possible. Rivers takes the snap and he hands it to Hollingshed again, who's got a little bit of a crease, and he's going to bulldoze his way past the first down marker. The Blazers are running the ball here early. And that's another big pickup for Hollingshead. As you can see here, he hits a hole. It's great blocks for him. 
He makes one miss, and then he does the rest like he's supposed to. Picks up 80 yards before he is brought down. Two receivers to the near side, one at the top. Fullback offset just off the line as he's sent in motion. Rivers takes the snap, and he's going to fake the handoff and roll to his right. And he's going to try to throw down the field and look like a little bit of confusion there on maybe the route, Kawan. Uh, I agree, actually, Landon. But to me, I think Roland Rivers actually overthrew him. Uh, 84, he actually seems like a shorter receiver. He's 5'10", not the typical six-foot receiver. So he tried to bullet it in there but comes up with a miss. Keep an eye on Dallas Baldner. He's at the bottom of your screen, number 16. He usually plays a big role in the Valdosta State offense as Valdosta State lines up here on second down and 10. Hollingshed sent in motion, and he's going to line up way outside below Dallas Baldner as Rivers takes the snap, and he's going to step up in the pocket, and he's going to chunk the ball down the field to Baldner, and Baldner's going to catch that, and he's going to be brought down just past the 10-yard line, and next here we are, folks. Big from, from game. The, from the middle of the field, and now Valdosta State's knocking on the door. As you can see here, he says up perfectly. Almost a sack by Dylan Donahue pushes him off. Roller Rivers makes a great throw to Dallas Baldwin. He picks up and almost scores, but gets stopped just short of the end zone. And just as soon as we talk about him, we see Dallas Baldner and just how much of an impact he can have on an opposing defense with his route running and his catching abilities. And this is so true. So, so true. Three receivers at the top, one at the bottom. Hollingshed still out there as he is sent in motion. And Rivers is going to take the snap, and he is going to be met in the backfield. Nothing on that. In fact, he, that also State is going to lose a couple yards on that play. This is true, and you can see right here the guards are pulling. It seems like a quarterback scramble, but it's set up for it. But the defensive line exploited it and made sure this offensive line moved out of their way so they can make a big play. Second down and 14 yards until the goal line for the Blazer offense. Rivers takes the snap and he's looking and he's going to throw and it seems he had a man, but he's going to overthrow his receiver. And that's number 11, Strange, that was targeted on that play. Roland Rivers has to make that throw, to be honest, Landon. With a game being big like this and the time being big like this and you're in the red zone, you have to put points on the board. Third down here for the Valdosta State Blazers, looking to somehow get into the end zone, even though they're 14 yards away. West Georgia fans chanting defense as Rivers takes the snap and he's going to throw and he's got a man and that is going to be well defended and that's going to be number one A.J. Leggett, the safety for West Georgia on that deflection. And it seems like Zay Howard had to catch a perfect throw by Roman Rivers as you can see here. He snaps back, comes back with the throw, lets the ball go. Wide open in the end zone. Just a little short to be honest. I think if he threw it more towards the back part line, probably would have been a completion and we will hear the Go Blazers chance as a touchdown will be on the way. Andrew Gray out there to hopefully, excuse me, Andrew Gray out there to kick this field goal for the Valdosta State Blazers, and the snap is taken, and it's almost blocked, and that is going to be no good, a missed opportunity for the Blazers. That was a, a miss by kicker Andrew Gray. And it's odd that he misses that field goal, just like it's just like having an interest in the paranormal. So, do you have an interest in the paranormal? Want a show that is offbeat, not stuffy? Then VSU TV has the program for you. 30 odd minutes airing Saturday nights at 11 p.m. following Saturday Fright Special. If the truth is out there, 30 odd minutes will find it, but only by sheer accident. West Georgia is going to take over right there where the missed field goal was on their 14 yard line couple missed opportunities by both teams here early in this game as we're in the second quarter. Gardner takes the snap and he's going to fake the handoff and roll out to his right. He's looking, he's looking and he has nobody as he is going to be brought down at the 10 yard line and that's going to be a sack. 
big, big sack by Jamar Simpkins. As you can see here, he fires off the ball perfectly. It seems like a play action fake. He didn't get sucked up. He remains in his lane and makes a great play on the quarterback, Will Gardner. The Blazers really, really needed that right there. Huge play for that black swarm defense of Valdosta State's as now the West Georgia offense is seemingly going backwards. Nine yard loss on the play as West Georgia takes over. Two receivers at the top, two receivers at the bottom. One man in the backfield as Will Gardner is under center. A man is sent in motion. Gardner takes the snap and he's going to, and it's going to be a halfback draw play, but that's going nowhere. Maybe a gain of two yards on that play. I guess they thought since they went past the first play, they could come back with the run of this play and maybe throw the defense coordinator off a little bit. But guess what? Those Blazers still are strong, and I can see they all read the play. They knew it was coming, and they were hungry to make a stop right there. All night is going to be a chess match between these two very tough teams. And it is third down for West Georgia as they huddle up, and then they break the huddle. West Georgia lines up in a shotgun, something they haven't done near as much as Valdosta State has done, as Valdosta State lines up in that formation just about every play. Gardner takes the snap and he drops back and he's going to throw the ball down the field into double coverage and even though it is caught it is out of bounds and that is well covered by Valdosta State's Larry Murphy. Yes it is as you see here on the play I think they were all already had ideas of going to Danico Carter number five for West Georgia he's a tall receiver wanted to try to pick on Larry Murphy but Larry Murphy lets him know that he's here and make sure that he can't make a big catch. But see, these are the situations that, that Valdosta actually preaches. I'm pretty sure they preach on the sideline. Put this offense in third and long situations. When they're in third and long, you give your defense a better opportunity of making a play. But when they're in short situations, this run defense, run offense is amazing. West Georgia puts their punt formation unit out there, and they punt it away, and that's going to be fair caught at about the 45, 46 yard line. Great field position for Valdosta State. I do agree, and that was actually a very smart fair catch because if not, I think his helmet will be rolling back to the 20 right now. So a few turnovers, a few penalties, a couple of possessions that have gone for nothing, and we have a tight game here in the second quarter. And, I mean, are we really surprised, Kwan? I'm not surprised at all. We said at the beginning this will go back and forth, and they both circled this game, so guess what? They're going to give their best, and this is going to show who really wants the most right here. The Blazers roll their offensive unit out there. Dallas Baldner on the near side of your screen. Rivers lines up and he's in the backfield as he takes the snap and he's gonna hand it to Hollingshed and Hollingshed's got a little bit of space and he's gonna scamper just up the middle for about six or seven yards. And that looks like a, a quarterback read there. Was a, either he could give it off to him or he could take it himself, but you see he gives it off to him because the defense the, actually read the quarterback. So once he did that, he decided to give it to the running back and let him pick up the big yards. And so far, other than the interception earlier, Rivers has made some pretty decent decisions tonight as, as he's tried to march his offense down the field. A man is sent in motion. Rivers takes the snap and he hands off to Hollingshed as he's going to try to scamper to the left side and he's going to make one man miss, but that's it. And that's going to be close to a blazer first down as that goes for a gain of about three or four yards. Actually, it is a blazer first down, Landon. I'll let you know right here, you can see the guard pulls across the field. He makes a solid block right there, gets hands on number four, and Holland Shades gets upfield for the first down. Blazers have had some moderate success running the ball, and that's the danger when you can get that passing game going so early is then you can play those offensive styles off of each other. Rivers takes the snap, and he's going to hand it off. Excuse me, he's going to fake it, and he's going to throw out to Damian Strange, who's in the flat, but that's going to go for a gain of about two yards. Yeah, as you can see here, just another quick hitch route, toss it off to him, try to let him get as many yards as possible. And excuse Face me, hand that off, gives it to him once again, gets up field, doesn't get many yards. And excuse me, that's Donovan Bolden off the reception. I apologize for that. Sorry for cutting you off, Landon. <laughs> you're good, man, you're good. Three receivers at the top of your screen, one to the near side. Rivers and Hollingshed in the backfield. The snap is taken, and it's going to be a, a toss play up the middle to Cedric Hollingshed, who's going to almost make one two-men miss. 
And he's going to scamper for the Blazer first down close to the 30-yard line. That's a big hit, as you can see here. It seems like nothing was going on. He tosses the Hollenshed. Hollenshed makes one miss, and he stumbles, bumbles, falls to the 30 for another first down hit. First down Blazers as Hollingshed is still out there. Rivers takes the snap and he's gonna try to read the defense and he does hand it to Hollingshed, but Hollingshed's not gonna get anything on this play. Yeah, as you can see here, they're still going with this read option here for Roland Rivers and Hollingshed. Rivers once again made a decent read, um, gives it to Hollingshed, letting him pick up yards throughout the outside tackles. And the last time the Blazers were at home, they played the West Florida Argonauts, and it was a very sloppy game as far as penalties are concerned. And we've seen a few penalties here tonight, but so far a pretty clean game, Kwan. I do agree. Rivers takes the snap, it's a low snap, and he's looking down the middle, and he's gonna fire, and he's gonna have his receiver, as the receiver's gonna fight for about another yard or two, and that's going to be number 80, Joe Fortson, on the reception, the big six foot six wide receiver. You can see here, Jordan Jeremy comes off and makes a beautiful block, and that's the reason that play was worked out perfect. He lets the ball go to him, number 80, and makes the big catch, and gets up to the first down for the Blazers. And the last time the Blazers were here, they were unable to get any points at all as they were they were shut down and weren't able to get a touchdown. And then they missed the field goal as Rivers takes the snap and he's going to look to the corner of the end zone. And he has a man and he just overthrows Damian Strange, who's been targeted quite a few times tonight. He has, but to be honest there, Landon, Damian Strange has to put two hands on the ball. He actually had a, a, a little small opportunity to catch the ball, but he put extended one hand instead of two. He puts two hands out, put his feet down. That's a touchdown. But... You gotta, you gotta conquer those, seize the moment, as they say. That's right, Kwan. That's right. Second down for Rivers and this Blazer offense, as there are three men in the backfield. One of those men sent in motion. Rivers takes a snap, and he's gonna throw the ball, and he's just going to overthrow his wide receiver Donovan Bolden on that play. I'm starting to see them do this a lot. They're putting Donovan Bolden in the backfield. They're bringing him out for a little short screen. It's almost like a running back screen. He catches it and gives up field. But that time, Roland Rivers couldn't make the right, didn't make the perfect throw to him. He misses it. No game. The incomplete pass. And once again, third down deep, third down here deep in West Georgia territory for Valdosta State. And this isn't really anything new for Valdosta State. They've struggled quite a bit this season trying to convert offensive possessions into points near the end zone, but nonetheless, that is going to be a toss play to Cedric Hollingshed, and this time, Valdosta State is going to get in the end zone for the Blazer touchdown. Freshman Cedric Hollingshed. Hey, they give the ball to him again on that same weird toss play. He gives up field. Number 69 makes a great block to the ground. Hey, and the band is playing right now. <laughs> Andrew Gray out to attempt the extra point for Valdosta State. The snap is taken, almost blocked, but the kick is up and the kick is indeed good. And another one point lead for the Blazers as the score is now 14 to 13 in favor of the Blazers. And like we said, the extra point played a big key earlier that West Georgia missed. They're gonna want that back at the end of the game. And the problem with missing those extra points is that's not something that just goes away in the first quarter. That is something that can haunt you for an entire football game, Kawan. And that's true, Landon. But what have shocked me here today, there has been no big returns by the West Georgia Wolves. This, once again, this special team unit is very, very talented. Usually when they get the ball, they take it to the house, Landon. So I think good to say that the Blazers are filling the lanes and making proper tackles and staying disciplined. You have to stay disciplined against this team because they're very powerful if you're not. Well, that's a very good point, Kawan. And you said it yourself, the special teams unit for West Georgia is, is really something to behold. They've had a lot of success this season. But you have to know that during practice all this past week, the Valdosta State knew about that and they game plan for it. And so far they're executing against it pretty well. And this is true, Landon, it's pretty good. I know I know for, sh for sure Coach Bell is on the sideline happy about this situation, but it's still a long game to go. So they gotta continue to do this for the rest of the game. And so far so good here for some South Georgia football here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. The score 14 to 13 in favor of the Blazers as Andrew Gray is out there for Valdosta State, ready to kick this ball off to West Georgia. Hey, 
And back to receive for West Georgia is that man, LaMarcus Franks, who you ha have alluded to a couple times, Kawan. He is dangerous, but I really think they're trying to avoid kicking to him, but we'll see what they do here on this kickoff. And I don't blame him. I would avoid kicking to him, too. He's a dangerous, dangerous man. And Gray kicks the ball off, and they are indeed going to avoid kicking it to Franks. So that's going to be caught just outside the end zone and ran up the field past the 20 at the 25, makes a man miss, and he's going to be brought down just past the 30-yard line at about the 31-yard line, and West Georgia will set up shop there. So it seems as they get upfield, they set the wedge. It was good blocks all around. He gets upfield. He makes one miss. I actually thought he was going to take it for more yards than what he did, but comes out. He only picks up 11 yards compared to if he would have actually did a touchback, it would have been at the 20. Two receivers at the top, one at, one at the near side. West Georgia lining up in really what they've lined up in the majority of the night, a pro-style type of offense as Gardner takes the snap, and he's going to hand the ball off to, I believe, Custis, and that's not going anywhere as Valdosta State's all over that. A gain of maybe one yard on the play. And the linebackers are doing a great job by attacking the pulling guards and tackles because in this offense, the only way to stop it, as you can see here, they attack the pulling guards. If you do not attack that pulling guard, that's a play for at least 10 to 20 yards every time. Look at you with the analysis, Kawan. I like it. Thank you, man. I like it. Another single back formation for West Georgia, but this time two receivers to the near side and one to the far side. Gardner reads the defense, he takes the snap and he fakes the handoff and he's looking to his left side and that is going to be picked off by Valdosta State and he has all day long to gallop into the end zone oh, for the Blazers. Wait, wait a second, Landon. I think they called him down and it seems like the 30 yard line, but that was a big, big play for Valdosta State. And I'm pretty sure on the sideline, the coaches are going crazy, and all players are too. And that is the junior, Raymond Palmer, on that interception. But it'll be interesting to see if they get the touchdown or if he'll be called down. As you can see on replay, a little play action set up. He throws it off, and he just manhandles the receiver and lets him know, I want the ball right now. And he made it sure that he could take the ball from him at the time. And really, I thought he scored, but he stepped out of bounds at the 30. But my goodness, Kwan, the balance to even make that a close play to prevent himself from falling out of bounds is just a testament to the athleticism of that young man. And that is true. I think he took a couple of uh, ballerina classes. Is it ballet? <laughs> I'm sorry, ballet maybe, classes. There you go. Maybe so. I'll tell you what. I'll let you ask him that if you ever see him around. I won't be the one asking him that. I don't think he'd be too happy about me asking him that, Landon. Probably not. <laughs> Valdosta State will set up shop at the 28-yard line as Raymond Parker did step out of bounds there. And that's going to be the second turnover, I believe, for West Georgia in this game as Rivers takes the snap, and he's going to hand it off to Hollingshead, who's got a huge hole, tries to make a man miss. But that is going to be a first down for the Blazers. Another big first down for Hollingshead. I told you this freshman is big for a reason. As you can see here, he hits the hole hard, great blocks. A hey, second level, and once you, and like I said, once the receiver and the tight ends get to the second level, it's everything you need because guess what? The running back's following. <laughs> and we've talked about hauling shed a ton, but let's give the big men up front some credit too. They are opening up huge holes in this West Georgia defense, a defensive unit that is stacked. As Rivers rolls out to his left and he makes a man miss, and he's going to throw it, and he's just going to throw it away. And I think that is a very smart play by Mr. Rivers. Very smart, very smart. Throw it right there to the cheerleaders so they can make a catch and maybe make a play themselves. <laughs> <laughs> But it was actually nothing around, to be honest. It seemed as, as if it was only one route going on at the time. So it was either that one route, which was deep, or out of bounds. And I'm glad he made the decision to throw it out of bounds that time. Well, we know that the position of quarterback is all about decision making, as Rivers is going to hand it off to Hollingshed. And that's going to be close, folks. But in, I do think it is indeed a first down for the Blazers. And once again, the big guy Hollingshed, this freshman is a beast I must say to be a freshman he's coming out here making big plays for the Sands and I know they're happy to see it indeed they are as Rivers takes a low snap and it's another handoff to Mr. Hollingshed but this time that's going nowhere and I think West Georgia was geared up for Mr. Hollingshed on that play and that was safety AJ Leggett flying hard downfield if you want to see on the see right here he comes down fast and furious even make Dallas Barnum miss a block he makes a beautiful tackle 
Dallas Baldner with that long catch earlier in the game that has made a that made a huge impact on that possession. And he's out there on the field again, lined up at the near side. A man sent in motion. Rivers takes the snap, and he's going to hand the ball off to Mr. Germany. And Mr. Germany is going to lower his head, and he's just going to bolt his way up the middle. And that's going to be a gain of about five yards. As you can see here, Jordan gets a perfect block. He squeezes in the hole right there. It wasn't much for him to get through, but when he got through there, he hit it hard, and it picked him up a good five to six yards, it seems. And what a luxury to have a, a two-headed attack, so to speak, at the running back position for Valdosta State. It gives them a lot of versatility on the ground for their offense. Yes, it does. The running back offset from Rivers. Manson in motion. He's going to fake the handoff, and Rivers is looking, and he's in trouble. And he's going to throw to his man, and ooh, that is going to be a huge hit just shy of the five-yard line. But that may be a first down for the Blazers, but actually not. It's going to be just shy, fourth down. As you can see here, they come out. Jordan Jer Jeremy seems like it was a, a pass route. He's supposed to be running, couldn't get it off. He makes the dump off to number 84 and gets rocked by Barton Sales. Well, it's fourth down, and the Blazers are going for it as it seems to be just only they're only one yard away from first down daylight. And I, I like this call, Kawan. I really do too, Landon. Let's see. Rivers takes the snap, and he's just going to run it straight up the middle. And that's going to be close, folks, but I'm not sure if he got it. And I'm we'll have to sure see where the referees a... mark him. And, you know, we – we, And since you know, as you see here, they set up the blocks. He tried to hit a hole to pick up the extra yard. And we are not for sure. Yet. Of course, the officials are getting the – chains out right now to make the measurement but to be honest I'm going to be really honest with you Landon I don't agree with the play call I agree with the going for it but I do not agree with the formation they lined up in <laughs> well hold up wait a minute partner you, you just got done talking about how you liked the play call but now you're going back on that and I mean me and you both know that hindsight is 2020. but what might your reasoning for changing your mind be as it is going to be a turnover on downs and West Georgia will take over? I really think it was a great decision to go for it, but the formation that they lined up in was an incorrect formation to line up in. If they were going to give it off and let Roland Rivers run it off or something like that, they honestly should put him either under the gun or maybe in a way where they drag a linebacker or something out of the box to make it seem like it's away from there and run it right up the gut and pick up that extra yard. They only needed one. Fair enough, Kawan, fair enough as now that Black Swarm defense is out on the field and West Georgia will take over on their eight-yard line. And even though on the last possession, Valdosta State was able to get points on that possession, they struggled once again in the end zone, and we've talked about it. That's not something, that's not anything new for them, as that's just going to be a handoff straight up the middle, and that's going to go for a, a pretty good gain there for about six yards. Yes, and that was, it seemed to be Franks on the carry and he got he hit the hole hard, really, really hard at that. I'm actually glad he did because if not, it will be a stop in the backfield. Those linemen are putting off some great blocks for both teams and actually a really good match in the trenches tonight. West Georgia lines up, and it's going to be an eye formation with one receiver up top and one receiver at bottom, a lot of men on the line. Gardner takes the snap, and it's going to be a handoff once again, and there's some daylight for that man as he crosses the 30, the 35, and he's going to be brought down just shy of the 40-yard line. And that, once again, LaMarcus Franks, the explosive man, as you can see here. He gets the ball, makes one good cut, and after he makes the cut, he's off to the races. I really honestly thought that if number three, Quay Walker, made that block, he'd probably get another 20 to 30 yards, but he missed the block. And, and we see, short. and we see just how dangerous Lamarcus Franks is when he gets space. We haven't seen too much of his speed displayed tonight. He's been bottled up for the most part, but there it is. And we see the speed of Lamarcus Franks, and so far, other than that play, that also say has done a decent job containing him. We'll have to see if they can continue that performance tonight. Gardner takes a snap, and he's going to fake it to Franks, and then Gardner's going to throw down the field, and that is going to be overthrown and picked off. And he's got a little bit of space. And, and he's going to be Kenny make, Moore. And he oh, makes, Kenny. And, and Kenny Moore makes about two men miss and almost makes a third man miss by jumping over them. And that is the third, that is, I believe, the third or fourth turnover of the game for West Georgia. And that is 
I mean, that's not good. That's not good if you're Oh, As you can see here, he lines back with a play action fake. He thought he saw something down the middle of the field, but overthrows him. Actually, it was open, but just a little bit too much sauce on the, on the throw right there. And Kenny Moore turns that play into a lot right there, and he makes a he turns a defender into a hurdle. Isn't that crazy right there? <laughs> I never thought I'd see that, but he turned a defender into a hurdle. <laughs> I actually thought I was going to track me right oh, now. Oh, here we go. Here we go, <laughs> Kwan. Valdosta State hoping to once again try to capitalize off of a West Georgia turnover. And imagine what the score would be, Kwan, if the Blazers were able to capitalize off of every turnover that has been committed in this game so far. As Rivers takes the snap and he's going to throw out to Hollingshed, who then is going to throw it back across the field to Rivers. And Rivers has... Oh, my. He had all day to run, but he is going to be brought down in the backfield, and that is an amazing play, and that's going to be number seven, Jakiron Young, the cornerback on that play. As you can see here, they set up a trick play. It didn't seem like a trick play. It seemed like another running back screen. Throws it back to Roland Rivers. To be honest, and Roland Rivers sets and makes a deep throw. Zay Howard wide open at the end of the field down by the 20-yard line with no one near. Rivers takes the snap, and he's looking, and he's un under a little bit of pressure. And he's just going to escape and run straight up the middle, and he's going to slide down just past the 45-yard line and get it back to the original line of scrimmage. Tick, 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 tick. That's got to get to the line. As you can see here, he looks and surveys the field. Nothing's there. He takes off with a run and slides to avoid the big hit. But they got to hurry up, Landon. Clock ticking down. 30 seconds left in the half as Hollingshed's going to have the ball toss him up the middle, and he's got some daylight. And he's just going to be brought down just past the first down marker at about the 36, at about, excuse me, about the 34 yard line. And of course, you can see here just another one of those toss plays to Holland Shed. He gets upfield, makes one miss, and gets as many yards as he can to get down because he knew the first down would stop the clock. But it seems like someone called a timeout. And we have a little bit of time here with the timeout. And we'd like to remind you that on Thursday, October 27th, Valdosta State will be hosting its Fall Career Expo in the Magnolia and Cypress Rooms in the University Center. The expo will run from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. and is for students interested in employment opportunities. A list of participating organizations will be available online at valdosta.edu slash careers one week prior to the event. Don't miss your chance to talk to some great organizations. With these last 25 seconds, I'm really wondering what they're, what type of play call the offensive coordinator and uh, Kerwin Bill are looking for. I won't be shocked to see a deep pass over the middle, knowing how many timeouts they possibly have. I think it's two if I'm correct, but if I'm wrong, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so we shall see now. But uh, to be honest, um, this is a pass rush to be scared about for the Blazers. But the offensive line is the holding their own, so we shall see if they can do it again. Well, the Blazers are marching their offense out there. 25 seconds left here in the half, and we'll see how they can manage this clock here. Maybe try to at least get a field goal on the board before halftime. Baldner goes in motion, and he's and Rivers is going to fake the handoff to him, and then he's going to throw it to Baldner, who's open along the sideline, who then will just dance out of bounds, and that's a smart play by Dallas Baldner as that's going to preserve some uh, game clock. Extremely smart, extremely smart. As you can see here, he fakes the, the play to Dallas Baldner and then checks back down to him. He makes one miss and gets out of bounds to stop the clock. And what I'm um, kind of shocked to see is Dylan Donahue is not on the field. And there, he's a dominant pass rusher for them. He's actually number two in Division Two in sacks and total sacks on the season right now with nine. And for the most part, that about also stay O line doing at least a decent job against this tough West Georgia defensive line as Rivers takes the snap and he's looking to pass and he's going to fake the pass and then he's just going to run straight up the middle and take off. And he's going to pass the 25-yard line, the 20, and he's going to scamper out of bounds close to the 15-yard line. Great play by Roland Rivers there. Another smart play by Roland Rivers. He was really thinking while making that play there because usually a quarterback, if he wasn't thinking, he wouldn't make the decision to go out of bounds. But you can see here he looks downfield. He gets upfield, and Jordan, Jer Jordan Jerry makes a great block. He gets outside and gets to the out-of-bound mark to stop that clock once again with 11 seconds remaining. couple of great plays here for the Valdosta State offense as they are looking to put points on the board before halftime with 
just over 11 seconds left here. Rivers takes the snap, and he's looking. He has protection all day to throw, and he's going to throw the end zone, and a man is wide open, and that's going to be number 11, Damian Strange, who's been targeted a couple times tonight, and what a clutch performance by the Blazer offense as this half is getting ready to wind down. The slippery Strange. <laughs> as you can see here, they line up a play-action fake, get good blocks up front. Roland River makes a perfect throw, and the Slippery Strange sits in the back of the end zone. From now on, I'm calling him Slippery Strange because somehow this defense continues to lose this man. I don't know how, but they continue to lose him. And I was just about to allude to that. That must have been a blown coverage by West Georgia as Strange was wide open. And the kick is up, and the kick is good with five seconds left here in the half. And with a kickoff approaching right here before half, that's that's a little strange to deal with. How do you approach this kickoff if you're Valdosta State with only five seconds left in the half? Well, if I'm Valdosta State, to be honest, I wouldn't kick it deep. Uh, <laughs> too much talent deep. Squib it. Make a big play. Make a tackle. Uh, probably run off like two or three seconds. Then you got a Hail Mary ball if West Georgia decides to do that. But I'm pretty sure the coaches are going to want to go to the locker room, so they're going to take a knee, and that'll be the end of it. But that's why we're watching and waiting to see what's going to happen. That's why they play the game. You never know what's going to happen. That's true. Especially in a game of this magnitude. And even though Valdosta State is up 21 to 13, just judging by the Valdosta State fans, they still don't seem too convinced yet, or at least just judging by their actions, not to say that they don't believe in their team necessarily, but we all, they all, excuse me, Valdosta State always plays West Georgia so close and I think it's just it's just a, a I guess what I'm trying to say is it just points towards the tension that is still in the stadium because of this game's magnitude I agree to be honest I'm up here with you but my hands are very wet like I'm out there on the field I said this earlier and I'm excited every every play during the kickoff even if it's just a penalty I'm excited to see what's <laughs> going on Landon Gray out there to kick this one away, and we'll see how Valdosta State wants to handle this kickoff with only five seconds left. They may try to pooch it as to avoid kicking to LaMarcus Franks. And Gray steps up, and he's going to kick a low line drive, and this is going to be a bouncer, and that's going to be caught at about the 20 yard line, and he's going to run around for a little bit, and then he's going to be brought down at about the 35 yard line, and that's going to be the end of the first half. And with that we head into and with that we head into halftime with your score VSU 21 and West Georgia 13. We look forward to seeing what adjustments these two teams make in the locker room. We'll be back with the second half action after the break. The Valdast Area Rotary Clubs have united with the First Foundation for Childhood Literacy and the Dolly Parton Imagination Library to mail age-appropriate books to registered children in Lowndes County, ages from birth to age five. Your local Rotary Clubs are raising funds and taking donations. For more information, call 244-5159. Want you help us? A childhood literacy project of the Valdasta Area Rotary Clubs. Back here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium here in Valdosta, Georgia for VSU TV, T, excuse me, VSU TV second half coverage of West Georgia versus the Valdosta State Blazers. And Kawan, really quick before this half kicks off, how do you feel about the uh, action in the first half of this game? Well, it's been a while and back and forth first half, but what I'm shocked to see is that there have been a lot of turnovers from the West Georgia Wolves. Um, usually in weeks of ahead, they've, they've done this also, but this is what's shocking me. They're doing it in the key moments right here when it seems like they have an op opportunity to, to take the lead or tie the game up. They've turned the ball over. Missed opportunities on both, uh, well, for both teams, really. Uh, Valdosta State has struggled at times converting their offensive possessions into points when they get close to the end zone, and West Georgia has turned the ball over a few times. But we still have a half of football left to play here, folks, as Gray gets ready to kick this ball off to the receiving West Georgia Wolves. And there is the kick, and it is just shy of the end zone and that is going to be caught at about the three yard line it's going to be ran past the 15 past the 20 makes a man miss he's got a little bit of space and he tries to make two other men miss but those two men are going to bring him down at about the 35 yard line and here comes will gardner in that wolf offense hey this is a bad offense very very bad this line is very strong and they're gonna i'm gonna let you know will they're planning to show it now 
they haven't got the opportunity to really put forth in the first half. When they tried, it went wrong because of turnovers, but they plan on making it show that they're a strong offense this half. Well, some adjustments are definitely needed on this side of the ball for West Georgia. The main thing is don't turn the ball over. They struggled a little bit with that in the first half as they come out in a single back formation. Gardner takes the snap and he's just gonna hand the ball off to Jackson who's gonna make one man miss, but then he's gonna be brought down just past the 40 yard line. That'll be a gain of about five yards. Uh, or excuse me, that is LaMarcus Franks on the carry. As you can see here, LaMarcus Franks takes the outsides, great blocks inside, makes sure he pushes the defense in inside to get as many more yards as he can. Great tackle by John Tello. Second down and five for the West Georgia Wolves as they line up at the on their 41-yard line. Three receivers to the near side, one to the far side, shotgun formation. Gardner takes the snap and he's looking to his right and it's gonna be a flats pass to number 14 who makes the catch and he makes a couple shifty moves and that's gonna be a nice gain in the air for West Georgia that's gonna go down to about the 40, to about the 44 yard line and they are now in Blazer territory. As you can see here, he throws out a quick screen to number 14. He gets up field, great blocks downfield. And you know what that means, it's gonna make, make people in this thing gain more yard. They coming out pretty strong this drive here. West Georgia breaks the huddle and Gardner's gonna, gonna line up directly behind the center once again. And depending on which side of the formation the running back runs through, this could be a strong side or a weak side formation as we'll see here after the snap. And it is a strong side formation as the Franks is going to take the handoff and he's just going to try to run up the middle and, and he's going to get maybe two yards on that carry. Yeah, nice two yard carry right there. He just hops and skips for another, for two yards right there. And it's pretty shocking to say that this 5-7 back does what he does. He, he makes people miss in open field. To be that small and do that and only weigh about a buck 50, that's a lot of talent there. Very shifty athlete, which is why it's so important for Valdosta State to keep him contained at least as much as possible. Very talented running back. Gardner lines up behind center once again. Takes the snap, and he's going to fake the handoff, and he's going to be under some pressure, and he's going to get rid of it, and he's going to have a man wide open. That's number eight on the catch who's going to stiff arm his way into the end zone. And just as soon as this second half starts, we have West Georgia scoring a touchdown, and we have a close game here at Kalani. As you can see here, the play action fake, they just ran the ball, so it set it up perfectly. Just short of making the sack, then he makes a man miss downfield with a, a perfect stiff arm right in the face mask to, to make the man miss. That there was number eight, Alex Omar. He's actually listed as a defensive end, but they bring a man to blocks from time to time as a tight end and as a fullback. And West Georgia takes the point after touchdown, and indeed, it is good as it is now 21 to 20 about the State Blazers. And that offense was scary good on that drive. And you know what else is scary good? BSU TV presents Saturday Fright Special every Saturday at 9 p.m. and midnight. Join host Scarewolf as he leads you through classic monster movies on Saturday Fright Special. Get your friends together and grab some popcorn before the popcorn grabs you. And popcorn sounds pretty good right now, Kawan. It does, it does. But instead of popcorn, I think I have a hot dog. <laughs> A little ketchup, a little mustard, and I'll be just fine. <laughs> well, unfortunately, my friend, you have to stay up here and commentate, so I can't have you leaving the booth right now to go get food. And that is true. That is true. But <laughs> once again, Landon, as we can see here, that one point is sitting on the board and is uh, continuously hunting the West Georgia Wolves. I'm actually shocked because I thought I'd see a two-point conversion right there, but they just took an extra point to take the one-point deficit. But I'm pretty sure they're trying to come out strong on defense to make to give the offense uh, another opportunity. And I was going to mention before the point after touchdown was attempted, I was – I was interested to see if West Georgia was maybe going to even fake a field goal in order to get that point back from the first quarter that they failed to convert on, maybe try to go for a two-point conversion and tie this game up. But clearly they're okay with just taking the point after touchdown and this only being a one-point game. And frankly, I don't blame them if I am West Georgia. You're playing a tough Valdosta State team at Baysmore Hyder, and you're within one point of tying this game. So you're they're still in this here in the third quarter as West Georgia gets ready to kick off to Valdosta State. Yep. And these are the reasons why they deferred. And again, that's Eric Autry back to kick this off for the Wolves. Autry steps up and he's gonna boot it 
And that's going to be caught just shy of the end zone across the 10, across the 20, and met at about the 25-yard line and then driven backwards to about the 21-22 yard line. But they're going to give him forward, but they're going to give him forward progress, and that is where the Blazer offense will take over. Yes, it is, and that was number nine, Jason Hatcher on the tackle. Actually, a defensive end. It's kind of shocking to see that big boy get down the field that fast. And this is a very key drive for the Blazers. I think so as well, Kawan, with West Georgia zooming down the field on their first offensive possession of this second half. Let's see if Valdosta State can respond. And another interesting point to make really quick as this second half starts, we have not seen one snap with Adam Robles yet. And that is very interesting considering that he's played pretty well for the most part this season. But clearly Rivers is getting the majority of the snaps tonight. And as we also see, Hollingshed has lined up there back with him as this Valdosta State drive gets underway. Rivers takes the snap, and he's going to fake the handoff, and there's going to be a flag on the play, and that's probably going to be a false start, Kwan. Ten times out of ten, just a little happy. Got to hold your water. Got to hold your water. <laughs> but it was shocking to see Landon that Roller Rivers has done great so far. He's completed 19 of his 30 out of 31 of his passes, but has thrown one interception. He has have done this for 196 yards and three touchdowns tonight. And he's played smart, and other than the one interception, he's taken care of the ball for the most part, and that's important. Rivers fakes the handoff, and he throws outside, and that throw is going to be short, and it's now going to be second down for the Blazers, a second and long situation. Second and long, second and a haunting long, because you know against this pass rush, you don't want to be in these situations. But like I said they earlier, they've done a great job of containing this pass rush, so we shall see now. And I can see now from here, Dylan Donahue is on the field, so keep an eye out for that monster. Second down and 15 for the Blazers. Look for maybe Dallas Baldner or Damian Strange to get involved on this play. As you've seen, Valdosta State likes to spread the ball around as much as possible. Rivers takes the snap, and he's going to look left and then look back right, and that's going to be tossed to Hollingshed in the backfield. And West Georgia is all over that play, and that's going nowhere. Yeah, I really don't agree with the play call there. Just set up. We've been doing – Valdosta State is doing a lot of screens, but as you can see here, they set up the fake screen to the outside of the receiver and try to dump it off to Hollingshed to pick up extra yards downfield. Great blocks, but the defense knew it was coming, and they were there on right on time. Here comes that hunting third and 19 where you don't want to be in against this pass rush. Well, third and a mile for the Blazers. But I don't put anything past this offense with as much talent as they have, especially at the wide receiver position. And look for Rivers to try to prop. Well, he probably will try to throw the ball downfield here as Rivers is looking. And it's going to be another short pass to Hollingshed up the middle. And once again, West Georgia is all over that. And that's not going anywhere. And Kwan, how do you? You said it before, you didn't like the, it was a very similar play call. You didn't like it on the previous play. How do you feel about it on this play? Let's well, look. You can see here, he dumps it off. The linemen get up field, and he's there. But guess what? Dylan Donahue's there also. I'm pretty sure they told him to sit back and watch the running back and see what he does instead of pinning the back and going straight after the quarterback just to see where exactly where the running back was. He targeted it, caught it, almost picked it off with one hand, as you can see. But Cedric Hollingshead made the catch, and fourth down. Well, Valdosta State's going to punt this one away, and it's a little bit of a low tumbling punt that's going to be caught just outside of the 50, taken across the 50, the 45, the 40, the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20, and he's going to dance around and make the whole, almost make the whole Valdosta State special teams miss, and he's going to dance and jive his way all the way to the 20-yard line, and you, we talked about the West Georgia special teams, and there it is. And there it is. He made it. He made about six or seven man dance right there, to be honest. <laughs> they catch the ball, he gets up field, makes one miss right there, and it's great blocks. As you can see, everybody is like a solid wall downfield waiting for him. And he makes more miss right there. It's, just, it's really shocking how they cannot make these tackles. You have to make these tackles when a special teams is as, as, as explosive as this special teams is. And a picture-perfect start to the second half for West Georgia, or at least it appears, as they're now looking to get in the end zone once again and take the lead back from the Blazers as Gardner and the West Georgia Wolves line up on offense. Looks like Gardner's changing the play. Maybe you see something in the defense. Gardner takes the snap, and immediately the play is going to be called dead by the refs. And we'll have to see what they have to say. The penalty is delay of game 
And it's going to be a delay of game on the West Georgia Wolves, and that's just a mental error. Mental error by Will Gardner. You think because he's a graduate transfer, he has the mindset to make the right plays and make the right decision. And right there, he just didn't make it. Got to get the ball off and give your, op your offense the opportunity to make a play right there. First and 15 for the Wolves. The ball's on the 24-yard line. And it's going to be a handoff to Franks up the middle, who's got some space, and he is going to run directly into the end zone, and that is a touchdown for the West Georgia Wolves. And just like that, the Wolves take the lead back. And this is this is the reason they defer to the second half. As you see here, the, the linemen get to the second level, and number five, Dante Robinson is blocked out of the play. And it lets you know if your middle man is out of the play, it's nothing but a seam up the middle, and he made sure he, he exploited that seam and put up six points right there. And we'll see if they're going to take the point after here. Even though they're, they've got the lead, there's still that looming one point from the first quarter where they missed the field goal, and we'll have to see what they do here. And they will take the PAT, and it is good. And it's the score is now 21 to 27 in favor of the visiting West Georgia Wolves here in the Gulf, in some Gulf South Conference action. And this is the reason why they deferred. They knew this this team would come out very fired up. And because they were at home, they would play great in the first half. But what they wanted to see was they wanted to see how well this team played after halftime. Can they hold that, that great block they did in the first half? Can they make that great catch they did in the first half? Can they continue to do it consecutively over and over again? And to beat this West Georgia team, you have to continue to do it over and over again because, once, I, like I said earlier, they were once ranked number three for a reason. That's right. And just because you fall a little bit in the rankings does not mean you are a pushover by any stretch of the imagination. And, you, and folks, you may have heard it through our microphones. The, West, the visiting West Georgia fans are absolutely loving this. And I think if you're a fan of football, you're loving this in general. We have a very good game here tonight. Very, very good game. Actually, it's a, actually a nice turnout crowd for West Georgia. A lot of people travel down to come see their Wolves play. I think it's because they're a really talented team. That's why they knew this game would be very close and almost down to the wire as we're looking at it. But... Still more to see. No doubt a very talented team and talented enough to be to have the lead on the scoreboard so far as West Georgia is coming out to kick this ball off to Valdosta State. And, that's, and that will be Eric Autry kicking off. One of the men back for the Valdosta State Blazers is Quaylen Patterson who is a running back, he will be back to possibly receive this kick. Autry steps up, and he kicks it away. And another kick just shy of the end zone, going to be caught about the four-yard line, taken past the 10-yard line, and that is an excellent tackle by West Georgia just shy of the 15-yard line, and that is going to be number 25, Baron Burns on the stop. Yeah, and Baron Burns flies through there, as you see. Really, to be honest, it seemed like a miss block by number 53, but it could be a miss block by number 21, Patterson. That West Georgia special teams coming alive here in this third quarter, and we didn't see really much of it in that first half. Valdosta State took care of it for the most part, but now, but now, excuse me, but now West Georgia is making plays on both sides of the ball and even on special teams. So West Georgia is clicking right now, and Valdosta State needs to answer here as we have Rivers and Hollingshed on the field. Rivers fakes the handoff, and he's going to try to follow Hollingshed, who's blocking for him. And that's a that's a modest gain for Roland Rivers there. It looks like a gain of about four or five yards as his helmet comes tumbling off to the ground. And honestly, that's how I like to see Roland Rivers run the ball. He has blocks set up perfectly for him, and he's attacked the blocks to pick up the extra yards that are needed at the time. But it seems he's hurt on the play. Yes, we have a man down on the play, and it is Roland Rivers. And that that's very as interesting. You, as you can see here, they make, they make clean blocks. He get up field, his helmet comes off. And it, looks like he, and it looks like Roland Rivers is possibly just cramping up on the field as the athletic trainer is trying to stretch his leg out now, which if you're a Valdosta State fan or even a Valdosta State player, if it's just a cramp, then that's a good sign because we all know that leg injuries can be scary. They can be. It can either be for a game or for a season. You never know. You never know.
If you're Valdosta State, how do you try to gain momentum after an injury like this? Well, while we have a little bit of time here, folks, I'd like to remind you once again to catch up with the nation's winningest high school football team every Thursday night at 8 p.m. on Wildcat Tradition. Coach Alan Rodemaker and host Monty Long bring you last week's highlights and keys to the upcoming action under the Friday Night Lights. Wildcat Tradition brought to you in part by BSU TV, Cable Channel 16. And it sees here Roland Rivers is walking off the field on his own, but he's limping a little bit. So it probably is, like you said, Landon, and probably cramps because I can see here he's trying not to stick his leg out too much. So it possibly is a lot of cramping going on down his lower leg. And we mentioned Adam Robles earlier, and we may indeed see Adam Robles now. Although we cannot confirm that it is a cramp, Roland Rivers is being helped off the field by his teammate right now. And they are gonna, they are going to bring Adam Robles out on the field. And this may not be exactly how V-State wanted Adam Robles to be implemented, so to speak, in the sense that he's now being substituted for an injured Roland Rivers. But nonetheless, Mr. Robles is out there on the field, and we're going to continue this game with him at quarterback for the Blazers as they line up in a shotgun with two men to the top of your screen. Robles takes the snap, and he fakes the handoff, and he's looking, and he's going to fire, and that is going to bounce off of the Blazer fullback and that was scary. That could have easily been picked off by West Georgia. Yes, it could have. As you can see here on the play is a perfect play action fake. He dumps it off to the tight end. Well, actually the fullback. He misses it. Little butterfingers on the play. It bounces up in the air. The ball holds in the air. Scary for Valdosta because the ball could have been picked off by West Georgia, but it wasn't, and it's an incomplete pass. Another third down situation for the Blazers. And it looks to be third and about six yards to go with the ball on the 17-yard line. Robles takes the snap, and he's looking. He's looking. He steps up, and he fires to Hollingshed for a short pass. And that is going to be, it looks just shy of the first down. A decent gain, but there is a flag on the play, and we'll have to see what that is for. Yes, we will. But that was a great Great move by Hollingshead. Indeed. He actually made a man miss with, with a freaky little shake move right there. To be honest, and that is going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct against the West Georgia Wolves. So West Georgia once again shooting themselves in the foot. Actually, it seems it's actually on both teams, so they did offset. But Hollingshead did pick up the first down on that play after shaking at least one man and making and getting more yards. So that's a beautiful thing to see, man. <laughs> And great call there, Kawan, saving me on that penalty call. <laughs> this is a rivalry game for a reason. That's right. First down for the Blazers. As Robles is, like we have said, he's back there at quarterback. In for, a, it seems to be an injured Roland Rivers. As Robles is going to make one man miss, and he's looking, and he's just going to throw this ball away as nobody was open on that play. Good coverage by West Georgia. And there's some laundry down on the field from the ref, and it seems to be holding, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it actually is holding, as seen by the ref. And now we've got a little bit of sloppy play on this side of the field. Two penalties, or well, technically three if you want to count. The unsportsmanlike conducts as two separate penalties, but just a lot of flags on the field right now in this third quarter that are affecting the Valdosta State Blazers right now, and they're moving backwards. And it's the wrong way to move against these Wolves because that defensive line, like I've said all night, they come at you like a pack of Wolves, and I'm pretty sure that's what's about to happen right now. That defensive line seemingly getting a little more pressure here in this third quarter as Robles is going to fire to number three who looked like was running a slant pattern and he was trying to target Zay Howard on that play but to no avail as that's going to fall incomplete and it's going to be second down and 20 for the Blazers. Yeah, as yeah, you can see here, sets up for a quick throw slant pattern. Hey, in that situation to me, Adam Robles has to make a better throw, has to put the ball more ahead of the receiver instead of behind him to give him an opportunity to make a catch and get more yards on that play. Zay Howard lined up on the near side, three receivers at the top of your screen, one of those being, of course, Dallas Baldner, one of their star wide receivers. And Robles is going to fake the pass, and he's going to toss it to Cedric Hollingshed, who makes one man miss, and then he's just going to be pushed out of bounds by two Wolves, and that's going to get it 
just past the original line of scrimmage, and it's going to be third down. And we've seen that play a couple times tonight. We have, and here it go again. And just talk to Hollingshead and let him make a play. And he made a man miss. Actually made a man go completely left. I really don't know what he was grabbing for, but it wasn't Hollingshead. That's right. <laughs> Hollingshad has made quite the impact in this game, and he's made he's really made quite the impact this season so far for the Blazers, giving them that really helping out with that two-headed system that they're running at running back as Robles fakes the handoff to Hollingshad, and he's going to roll out to the right, and he's going to throw down the field, and that is going to be caught. That's number 83, Donovan Bolden, on that reception, and what a great catch, and that's going to be a first down for the Blazers. Great play. As you can see here, they set the play action fake. Great blocks. They only sent three or four at that time. Throws it deep. It's a probably about seven man, in, about six or seven men in coverage. Make the perfect throw. Can't ask for more. That's right. Roland Rivers with his athleticism and Robles with his arm. As Robles is going to throw a quick ball to number four, which is going to be caught for a short gain, may, maybe a gain of one yard on the play. And there's more laundry on the field, but this time I think it's on West Georgia. They couldn't get a man off in time. It seems like they're changing packages a lot due to what they're seeing from the Valdosta State Blazers. And it seemed like a man didn't make it off the field in time, though. But we will see. We've seen quite a few short passes from the Blazers. And we'll go to the head referee really quick to see what the call is. And it seems to be they're discussing exactly what the call is. And we'll go to the head referee. And it is going to be on West Georgia. And it's going to be an illegal substitution on West Georgia. So a little personnel, uh, is some personnel issues there for the West Georgia Wolves. Too many men on the field. Got to get them off. Got to get them off. So that helps the Valdosta State cause it. It is now first down and five to go. Ball on the 46-yard line. Robles in there at quarterback. Robles takes a snap, and he's looking. He steps up, and he fires down the middle. Number 10 catches it at the 50, crosses the 45, and he's fighting a couple wolves trying to get to about the 40-yard line, and they will give him forward progress to the 40-yard line, and that's going to be number number 10, Stephen Denmark, on that reception. That was a great catch by Stephen Denmark and a great throw by Adam Robles. As you can see here, he looks like he runs an in route, gets upfield, makes number four miss, and try to take another man with him, but great run by him, great run, and Great catch. Robles sees something with the West Georgia defense, and it looks like he's going to change the play as they have three rod receivers at the top of their screen. And he's going to look that way, and Robles is going to fire down the middle. And that is, wow, what a great catch down the middle. And that's going to be a gain for about 10 yards, and I believe that will be a first down for the Blazers as that is caught by Anthony Ingram. Yes, and as you can see here, he throws it quick to Anthony Ingram. Makes a great possession catch, but just short of the first down landing. Actually, I think a one yard to go on this play, and it's second down. Well, so far the short passes are working for the Valdosta State offense, but I can't help to think when they're going to try to throw a bomb down the field with all these short passes as Robles fakes the handoff once again, and it's another short pass down the middle. And this is going to get them the first down this time as it was second down on that last play, and Robles is marching the troops down the field. Yes, it is. And as you can see here, he does another fake. They pull the guard and make it look like it's a run, but makes a great throw to a wide open Joe Fortson. He was sitting in the middle of the field for a very long time, man. I was actually shot Robles didn't get the ball out quicker, but we'll take what you get, and that's another first down for the Blazers. And it looks like there's a man down on the field, and I believe that's number eight, which is who is Alex Armaw. The, the six foot two defensive end for the West Georgia Wolves. And while we have a little bit of time here, October is Hispanic Heritage Month, and to celebrate, Valdosta State has put together a list of fun activities that can help further your education on Hispanic culture. On Friday, October 14th, the Spanish Club will be hosting a Hispanic dance and dinner in the Magnolia Room in the University Center. The event will run from 6 p.m. until 9 p.m. Please contact the Spanish Club for more information. Landon, let yes, me sir. see your salsa. I can promise you, Kawan, nobody wants to see that except for you, and that is, that is a little strange. <laughs> this is true. I'm glad to see Alex Ramon walking off the field there. 
It's always good to see a player able to walk off the field under his own power after an injury. As the Blazers now set up, and and sometimes even those injuries, even if it's unintentional, sometimes they can kill momentum on an offensive drive. As Robles takes the snap and he's going to throw it outside, and that's going to be caught near the 20 yard line, and that and that looks like a catch for about that was like a gain for about three or four yards. As you can see here, he just rolls out to the right. He sees the man wide open. Actually, that was one on the money because if it was short, it was picked off and the Wolves were going the other way. So that was a great throw by Robles and a great catch by the receiver, Damian String. Well, even though we've seen a lot of rolling rivers tonight, Adam Robles is no pushover at quarterback by any stretch. As you can see, he's out here throwing the ball left and right all over this field. And Robles fakes the handoff again, and he's looking, and it, and he's going to throw down the middle to a wide open receiver, and that is Zay Howard on the touchdown catch for the Valdosta State Blazers, and that will put the Blazers back on top. And Zay Howard literally walks down the field there. It looks like a post route. He goes straight down the middle, and I don't know where the secondary is, but they're lost, and he's in the end zone. That's a touchdown for the Blazers. And with the point after touchdown, that will put the Blazers back on top. Of course, if they can convert this, and it'll bring it back to a one-point game as we see Gray here lining up to take this point after touchdown. And the snap is up, and Gray kicks it. And it looks to be good as that is going to put Valdosta State on top, 28 to 27 here in the third quarter. And these teams are neck and neck. And it looks like so far it's going to come down to the wire. All the way down to the wire, Landon. And Robles comes in and does it poised and does it the right way. And it's shockingly to see that he didn't panic in any type or any form or fashion. He had the opportunity to panic when they were back all the way up and probably I think it was like first and 15, but he showed that he's poised and he can make the same plays that Rolling Rivers makes. And that's why they have a great quarterback tandem over there at Valdosta State. And that's a very solid point. It, it, must be not, it must be nice to have a quarterback on your team that can just come in directly off the bench, especially after an injury, and just fill in for whoever was starting for the game and have an impact like that on the field. What a luxury to have two quarterbacks that are perfectly capable of getting your team victories. But another luxury that this Valdosta State offense has is they have – and we talked about it really all night, that two-headed running back system with Cedric Hollingshed and Jordan Germany. We've seen more Hollingshed tonight, but when Jordan Germany has come on the field, he's been effective. That's true, that's true. But I think what they're doing is with adding that run in from time to time, they're keeping this defense honest and the coordinator honest with his play calls. Instead of sending blitz after blitz, they're having to drop people back into zones. And I'm starting to see that these linebackers aren't getting back quick enough and Valdosta is taking a great advantage of it. And it seems, just judging off the scoreboard, that these teams mirror each other very well. Both teams have perfectly capable offenses, and both teams have very talented defenses. And it's really to see who's going to crack first under this tight game pressure as Gray kicks the ball off for the Valdosta State Blazers. The ball is caught at about the four-yard line, and it's ran past the 15, up to the 20, up to the 25, and, and that is going to be a huge hit right there, just shy of the 30-yard line. And that is number 31, Maurice Fas facing on that tackle. You can see here, they look like they try to set a wedge up. A lot of players weren't in the exactly right place, but number 31 keeps running and makes a big hit on the on the return. And what I'm shocked to see here is the West Georgia's offense has not put in Devontae Jackson. Hmm. And he's a big, big back for them. Actually, he's ranked in the top five in the Georgia South Conference. And this West Georgia offense looking to simply respond after Valdosta State marches down the field and Gardner takes the snap and he's going to look and he throws and he has a man who bobbles it for a little bit, but it's eventually caught. And that's number and that's number three, Kay Walker. Once again, Kay Walker showing up. As you can see here, nice play, nice, nice pass block for Will Gardner. He throws the perfect throw to Kay Walker. Kay Walker bobbles it a lot. But he makes sure he holds on to make the possession catch for another first down for the Wolves. And that was number two, Andre Johnson Sr. on the coverage there. 
One receiver up top, one receiver near side. Gardner takes the snap, and he's going to toss it to Franks. And Franks is going to try to bounce it outside, but he's going to met, be met at about the 40-yard line, and that might be a loss of about one yard there, Kawan. And this is why they're called the Black Swarm. They all flew downhill and made a big hit. And as you can see here, they couldn't get a seal block and really should have been a holding call, but it wasn't. And it's okay because all the Blazers were on the play when it mattered. Ball on the 39-yard line. Gardner and the Wolves break the huddle. Four men on the defensive line for the Blazers. Two linebackers up. The rest of the men in coverage, it looks like. Gardner takes the snap, and he's looking. He's, he's under a little pressure, and he's going to fire. And he's got a man, but he just overthrows his man. And his wide receiver was wide open there near the 40-yard line. Yeah, K.J. Palmer had found a way to sit right off in the zone defense of Valdosta. And to be honest, Will Gardner has to make that throw. It kind of shocked me that he didn't. He's standing about 6'5". You can see over the line. He can pretty much see downfield anytime if you want. Just not a good throw. As far as throwing is concerned for the West Georgia Wolves, they've missed a couple of throws tonight, and it's cost them dearly as now they're in a third down situation on their side of the field. Two men to the near side. Two men stacked on each other on the far side. And the running back in the backfield offset from the quarterback in a shotgun formation as Gardner steps back. Gardner takes the snap and he's gonna step back and, and he's looking and he's under pressure and he's just gonna throw this ball away. And even though that is a third down situation and they're behind in this game, so to speak, that's a smart play by Will Gardner. It is, but even smarter play by the defensive coordinator. He sends a late blitz to the right side. Will Gardner never saw it coming to be honest, Landon. With that time to sit and relax and then go out there later on in the play, never saw it coming, couldn't get the read downfield, have to throw it out, now they're punting it. Great time to blitz for that Black Swarm defense as, as, you, as you can see how beneficial a good blitz can be when you time it right and you, put it on, and you run it on the right down as now West Georgia punts this ball away and it is a sky high kick, not too far. It's gonna bounce at about the 25 yard line and take a West Georgia roll down all the way to about the Valdosta State six yard line and that is where the Blazers will take over on offense. And will, that was a big roll. I really didn't expect it to go down to there. Maybe a fair catch there would have been a lot better for the Blazers, but he was way out of position. And in that situation, I'm pretty sure everybody on the punt return team was screaming something called Peter. And when they call Peter, that means get out the way because we don't want to touch the ball right now. It's a very good point, Kawan. The Blazer offense will now take over on the eight yard line. And we'll see who they put out here at quarterback and it's gonna be Robles again. And at first we thought that Roland Rivers was just cramping but it might be something a little more serious now is this is the second offensive possession that Roland Rivers will now not be a part of as Robles is set to take the snap and he does he fakes the hand off to Hollingshed and he's going to roll out in his own end zone and he's going to take a shot down the field to Dallas Baldner who is open and he makes the catch at about the 45 yard line and he's going to run it all the way down to about the West Georgia 25 yard line and I was wondering when that bomb pass was coming, and here it is. There you go, that deep ball, that Dallas Baldner. You, hey, you never expect him, but he slips out in coverage, runs hard, deep. It looks like a post route, catches it. I thought he was going to make one miss, but he didn't. But it's okay, because that is a first down for the Blazers. Valdosta State wasting no time getting up to the ball here in West Georgia territory as they're looking to score quick and score effectively as Robles is back. He sees something and it looks like he's changing the play call on the field. Robles takes the snap and he's just gonna hand it off to his running back, Hollingshed, who's gonna lower his shoulder and turn those big legs and get about three yards on the carry. Very, very big legs. As I said, Hollingshed is a six foot back, a lot bigger than all the other backs they have on the, on the roster, but he makes plays. And he's what you need in these situations been making plays all night for the Blazers and that's why he's out there on the field and that's probably why he's gotten the majority of the snaps ahead of Jordan Germany. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near side, offset fullback. No surprise here, another shotgun formation. 
for this air raid attack by the Blazers as Robles fakes the handoff, and he's going to throw down the middle into triple coverage, and what looked to be picked off at first was knocked away by the receiver, and the receiver had to play defense there. Hey, the receiver, Damian Strain, turned into a defensive back right there because he threw the ball, wasn't coming to him. As you can see here, Robles fakes. He makes a throw under pressure. The ball hangs a little bit. And it would have been a picked off and Strange would not have been sneaky, like I said earlier, and poked that ball out like a defensive back. Strange is making a lot of plays tonight. I do question why Adam Robles maybe threw into that coverage considering there were three defensive backs back there. I don't know if maybe he saw something that we haven't or maybe we saw something he didn't. But nonetheless, it's third down here for the Blazers as they are in West Georgia territory. Robles takes the snap, and it's another toss play to Hollingshed up the middle, and Hollingshed makes one man miss, and he's going to get past the first down marker, and that play call has killed West Georgia all night long. Has destroyed the West Georgia defense. As you can see here, they set up like they were running deep, and a little toss play to Hollingshed. He makes a man miss and picks up the first down. It happens. It continues to happen all night with this, with this halfback draw or toss play, you can call it. It's weird, but guess what? It's getting the job done. Robles takes the snap, and he's looking, and he's going to fire into the end zone into double coverage, and that's going nowhere, folks. And I'm not sure if he was targeting his wide receiver there or maybe just trying to get rid of the ball, but that was that was also close to being picked off. It was, it was. I really think he just let it go because he knew the pressure was on the way. He was two seconds away from getting popped, and he did still get popped for releasing the ball, but he had to do what he had to do in that situation. Just glad it wasn't an interception. Three receivers on to the far side, one to the near side, and it's going to be a read play to Hollingshed, who takes the handoff, makes two, makes three men miss, but he's going to be gang tackled at about the 12, 13 yard line, and that'll go for a modest game. You see there, that was a quarterback read right there. He had the option to either keep it or give it to Hollingshed. They pulled out. It seemed like a good read, maybe, but in that situation, I feel like they never. They wasn't expecting Robles to keep the ball, so maybe he should have kept it and picked up a little bit more yards than Holland Shea would have got on that play. And that's certainly something we haven't seen a lot of from Robles really all season for the Blazers, as usually in those type of play calls, they use Roland Rivers' athleticism for those type of play calls. So that might, that might indeed be a good idea. I'm not sure West Georgia would ever expect a play call like that as Robles takes the snap and he's going to step up in the pocket and he's going to fire, and that is going to be caught, and that is going to be a Valdosta State touchdown. That's Damian Strange on the touchdown catch. Slippery Strange. Here you go again. <laughs> can they keep up with Slippery Strange? I don't know. I guess not. As you can see here, Robles draws back. He steps up and makes a throw under pressure, and it's crazy because – that was great coverage by the defensive back, but once again, my man, Slippery Strange, taking that play. You're so happy he scored just so you could say Slippery Strange again, aren't you, Kawan? I am, because he's so slippery. <laughs> <laughs> as Gray kicks the, the PAT, and it is good as the score is now 35-27 to 27 in favor of the Valdosta State Blazers. And, Kawan, if you're West Georgia, what are you telling your team right now? Telling them, be... be composed you're going to get the ball you know that we're about to kick it to you I need you to make a play but do what you can not to force anything because this is our moment here to score and take a lead or maybe tie the ball game which I'm pretty sure they're gonna try to tie the ball game with them down by eight and maybe more specifically if you're talking to Will Gardner right down there for West Georgia what are you telling the West Georgia quarterback right now telling him he got to he has to make these throws that we really need him to make right now because in this situation, this team is up in a hostile location. And you know, once momentum gets going, it's hard to break that thing called momentum down. So I'm pretty sure the offensive coordinator is, is letting him know to stay calm, make the right throws, and be smart and be disciplined. I'm pretty sure he's telling his offensive line and all players to be very, very disciplined because without this discipline, this black swarm defense, they're going to make you pay, as you've seen most of the time tonight. And I'm sure the black swarm defense is getting a talking to right now, and I'm sure Coach Bell is probably down there telling them to not let up. Well, really, he's probably telling the offense that too. Do not let up on this team. Do not get comfortable. This has been a game of cat and mouse all night, and you see just as soon as the Blazers score, West Georgia can score just – as fast as we get ready for the on the ensuing kickoff here. And Gray's back to kick this off to West Georgia. 
and we'll see how they want to handle the special teams on this play as the West Georgia special teams has been quite effective here in this second half. And Gray kicks the ball off, and that's going to be caught just shy of the end zone, and that's going to be ran out as he crosses the 10, the 15, and he's going to try to bounce outside. He's going to try to hurdle a defender, but it's to no avail as he's going to be brought down at about the 25-yard line, and here comes the West Georgia Wolves. That's true. He caught the ball, got a feel, tried to make one man miss or more. Good blocks, actually. To be honest, if he misses that, makes that man miss, I feel like he picks up another 15 to 10 yards. But to be honest, that is a long, long man. The kid's 6'5". He's only a sophomore, I think. Man's got a lot of time left, but he's a very talented receiver. Indeed he is, Kawan, as Will Gardner comes out in a, in a very tight package offensively for the West Georgia Wolves. And V-State is going to, they're going to collapse their defense up on the line too as it looks like they're setting up for possibly a running play and it's going to be a play action pass instead as Gardner avoids one pursuing defender and that's just going to be thrown away. And great coverage by the Black Swarm defense it there. It is great coverage by Black Swarm defense. But number 13, John Marvin. He has to make that sack right there. To be honest, you, I know Will Gardner is long and he made him miss, but if he makes that sack, that's like a five to seven yard loss. And that's what really needed on, against this West Georgia offense for Ooh. the defense. But that's still a great play with it being an incomplete pass though, Landon. West Georgia's had some, has had quite a bit of success on the offense tonight, even with a lot of the mess ha haps that they've had. But I can't help but feel that Valdosta State should be up more in this game due to a couple of things really as Franks takes the handoff and he's going to use his wheels to get just past the 30 yard line and that's going to be a decent gain of about four or five yards. As you can see here how they use him and get him lost in these big boys as you like I said earlier in the show he's five seven so it's easy for him to get lost in these taller linemen that are probably like six five six six it makes it perfect for him to pick up gain big gains third down for West Georgia and they've been third they've been in third down situations a lot and although they've moved the ball down the field they haven't moved it down the field near as fast as the Blazers have tonight and it'll be interesting to see what they can do here on this third down with just over a minute left here in the third quarter Gardner takes a snap it's a low snap but he's able to recover it and he pump fakes and he's just going to throw that ball away and there's that Valdosta State defense causing pressure again up front again and again and again again but this is what's shocking me. Instead of the Wolves pass rush, it's the Blazers pass rush. They came out, they came out here today to let them know that they do exist. They should be one of the top pass rushes in the nation. And it's great to see that, the, the great battle in the trenches tonight. Absolutely. And one can't help but wonder really quick before West Georgia punts this ball away, if the Blazers play this way against North Alabama, that could be a very different game, even as big as the margin was, a victory was in that game, as West Georgia is going to punt this away, and it's a high punt down close to the 30-yard line, and and it's and it was going to be fair caught at the 30-yard line, but it's going to be muffed, and that is a fumble by the Valdosta State special teams, but nonetheless, it is recovered by Valdosta State, and the Blazers catch a huge break there. A uh, very huge break. Same like there, Tom. As you can see here, the ball's up in the air. He muffed it, goes up on his legs, and that's number 43, Thomas, right with the recovery. He slides in there and comes in fast. I'm glad he's a heads-up player right there. Saves the team a big, big miscue. West Georgia getting ready on defense, and they looked on their heels on that last drive as they had no answer for Robles and Hollingshed. And the Blazer offense drove down the field and they put points on the board and they have another chance to do it here. And this will be a great opportunity to do here. Like I've been saying, they have key drives. Here's another one. You get up big on this team, maybe give you an opportunity to maybe relax on the play calling, but still put the foot on the gas and try to keep the score up. Two men to the near side, one to the far side, but one man sent in motion to the top of your screen as Robles takes a snap and he fakes the hand off the hauling shed, and that's going to be thrown out wide and caught close to the 30-yard line and ran up to the 30-yard line as that will be a gain of about six yards on the reception. And that was number 80, Joe Fortson on the catch. Joe Fortson is about 6'6". Six, six. As you can see here, he uses his frame. Robles stops back with the play action pass, quick throw to him. Even though it was low, he got his long body frame to get down there and make a great catch for a couple of yards. Clock winding down, 19, 18 seconds. 
And we'll see how Valdosta State wants to handle the clock situation here in the third quarter, as I'm sure they're going to preserve the timeouts that they have for the fourth quarter. And they indeed may run this clock down. And I think that is what they're going to do as we're getting ready for a fourth quarter of action here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. And the clock will hit zero here in the third quarter. And at the end of the third quarter, with one more quarter, your score is BSU 35 and West Georgia 27. Stay with us on BSU TV. Batty, let me be honest with you. Won't filing for Social Security benefits online be confusing? George, it's simple and easy, and you can do it in your pajamas from the comfort of your own home. Oh, my. You've navigated through asteroid belts, right? Oh, sure, plenty of times. Well, compared to that, navigating socialsecurity.gov is a snap. Really? It's so easy. Even Kirk could do it. <laughs> Back here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium, we have a very tight game here between the West Georgia Wolves and the Valdosta State Blazers, and it is the beginning of the fourth quarter, and this is what it all comes down to, Kawan. It does, it does. It's the big fourth quarter. Who wants it more? This is an opportunity for Valdosta to, to pin them pin them deep, you would say. But not deep as in yardage. I'm talking about deep as in the score. <laughs> because if you put them deep in this situation, it makes it hard for them to come back this late in the game. Robles takes over for the Valdosta State offense, and this fourth quarter is soon to be underway as Valdosta State is looking to get a statement win over the tough West Georgia Wolves. The Robles takes the snap, and he hands off to Hollingshed, who's going to lower his shoulder and try to get up the middle. Takes a bit of a shot there, and it's going to be close to the Blazer first down, and we'll see if they'll give it to them. Cedric Hollinshed, he's running extremely hard, and you can see, and that's another first down by Cedric Hollinshed. As you can see, they're using the bigger backs to exploit this bigger defense than usual. And there seems to be a man down on the field for the West Georgia Wolves, and I'm, I can't tell who that is right now. But while we have a little bit of time, Kawan, can you uh, give us a message? Yes, I'd like to let y'all know about the Valdosta Donor Center's doors are always open for blood donation that could save a life. In partnership with American Red Cross, the, the VDC takes appointments five days a week for blood and platelet donations. For more information on the center's hours and appointment availability, please contact the VDC at 229-241-1141. And the West Georgia player is still down on the field. Not sure who it is yet or exactly what's going on down there with that injury. But while we have a little bit of time here, if you're Valdosta State, what are you telling what are you telling yourself right now? Continue to do what you do. I wouldn't stop it. And honestly, it's working. So continue to either run the ball or put it in the air and make the great throws and make the great runs. They have to continue to make these great blocks also because, of course, without these blocks, these runs or these big pass wouldn't be possible. And I'm sure Coach Bell is down there telling them, look, you're up 35-27 to 27 here in the fourth quarter. It's an interconference matchup. Do not take your foot off the pedal. There's still a lot to be played for this season. And... On the play, injured is number 90, Takiri Raylands, the defensive line. Takiri, or excuse me, I'm, I'm sorry. It is Ladarius Gallion, the 6'4 defensive, defensive tackled for West Georgia that is down on the field right now. And we're hoping he's okay as he is still down. And our uh, best wishes go out to that young man right there as we hope he is okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they really do hope he's okay because – that's depth in their defensive line, and he's a strong player, and he's been doing great all night, so I hope he gets up and everything's okay with him. And the West Georgia players are taking a knee on the field right now. And while we have an injury here, we're going to step aside here for a moment. We'll be back right here on BSU TV. Valdosta, Georgia. It's all you need with innovative minds that feed a thriving business environment, all with access to international contacts, and a university influence with championship teams. It's premier healthcare and a community that's metropolitan, yet inviting. Valdosta, Georgia, all you need. Back here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium as the West Georgia Wolves are getting ready to cart 
Ladarius Gallion off the field who has sustained an injury of some kind. And we said it before and we'll say it again. Our best wishes go out to that young man and the West Georgia Wolves. We're hoping that he is okay as they get ready to cart him off the field. Well, here we are in the fourth quarter, and it's a tight game between the Valdosta State Blazers and the West Georgia Wolves. And Kawan, I asked you before the break, what are you telling Valdosta State? Well, if you are Valdosta State and you're the coach, what are you telling them right now? But now that we have a – it seems to be an emotional injury for the West Georgia Wolves, how do you tell your team to bounce back from something like that? Uh, actually, to try to make this pass rush become realistic again because it's, as of lately it's become non-existent, to be honest, Landon. They have to get off the ball and make a stop right here. This is key for them. Pressure is key as we get ready to continue action here in the fourth quarter. Blazers up 35-27, to 27 and they have the ball on their 34-yard line. Robles is still in there at quarterback as Robles takes a snap, and he's going to hand it off to Hollingshead, who's going to run it straight up the middle, make a man miss, and he's going to be shoelace tackled right past the 45-yard line, and that's going to be a Blazer first down. Another great block and another great run by Hollingshead. As you can see here, the guard pull, the tackle actually pulls, makes a key block inside, and that means nothing but green for Hollingshead. And he's a big man, so of course he's going to pick up the yards. And the Blazers hurry up, and it's another handoff to Hollingshed, but this time he's not going to get much at all, maybe a gain of one on the play. Uh oh it's getting a little chippy out there. And there, indeed there is a flag, and Something tells me that's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct, Kawan. And if it's on the Blazers, it's not needed. They have to calm down. You have a big, you have a chance to upset a team who's been ranked in the top three at the beginning of the season. Why make a bonehead decision and go back and retaliate? What you have to do is relax, let them come after you, and then be smart and be ready to make a play when your time is called. And everything means so much more here in the fourth quarter. This is crunch time for both teams. And both teams really trying to prove something. Valdosta State trying to prove that they indeed are going to contend this year in the GSC. And the West Georgia Wolves trying to prove that they can, they can bounce back from a heartbreaking loss at the hands of the North Alabama Lions. And the call was just made on the field, ladies and gentlemen, and it indeed is unsportsmanlike conduct, but it's going to be offsetting penalties on both teams. So really nothing changes as far as ball possession. Offset, but this is the weird thing. I think number 72 hasn't been ejected from the game. I actually don't agree with this call right then. Was I couldn't see where maybe he should be have been having been ejected, but it is something to see. But of course, there is no instant replay, so we can't go back on that situation and check that out. And that is number 72, Travion Wallace, the offense, the six foot six, 275 pound offensive lineman for the Blazers. And the Blazers' offensive line has done a decent job for the most part, but that could hurt them here in the fourth quarter as they lose one of their starting offensive linemen. And that is true because some of these blocks that were made actually was number 72. So we are waiting to see if possibly who fills his role could do the same thing he was doing at the beginning of the game because they have not allowed one sack this game. And a couple things have held up this game to start the fourth quarter. We had the injury. And then we had the unsportsmanlike penalties. And now it is second down here for the Blazer offense at about midfield as Robles is lined up deep in the backfield for the offense. Two receivers to the top of the screen as Robles takes a snap. He's going to look down the middle and he's going to fire. And there's, there's nobody there as I believe he was trying to hit Zay Howard on a crossing route but it falls incomplete. It does, and it seems like that was like a drag route and probably for the whoever the slot man was went straight at the safety to stem him to try to free up the drag route. But the defense stayed on it. It seemed like a man coverage because they fall. He followed him all the way through, so it seemed, seemed like it made a bad play. And the West Georgia defense trying to pump their, fan, their visiting fans up here as the West Georgia fans indeed are on their feet. And it is third down for the Blazers. Two receivers to the near side, two to the far side. Robles looks right, then looks back left, and he's going to throw to Dallas Baldner, who catches it at the 50, and he's going to fall forward to about the 50, or excuse me, to about the 45-yard line, and that's going to be shy of the first down. Just shy of the first down. But you know, the replay, they do their usual good blocks, good cut blocks up front. Dallas Baldner gets the ball and makes, tries to get a field for a first down, but comes up just short. And now I'm pretty sure Coach Bell is going to send the punt unit out on the field. And I like the play call here. Punt the ball away. Don't risk anything just yet. Even though we are in the fourth quarter, there's still 13 minutes left, and you do have the lead. So I like the call by Valdosta State here to punt the ball away. 
And I agree as with the you snap like is taken and the punt is up, and it looks to be a pretty good punt that's going to fall at about the, but it's going to take a West Georgia bounce backwards, and it's going to go out of bounds just shy of the 20-yard line. A ball that bounced near the 10-yard line, but then bounced back towards the other side of the field, and it gave the West Georgia offense about 10 courtesy yards there to start their drive. And the reason was that it seemed like the ball hit number 43, Thomas right on the back of his heel, and the ball bounced back 10 more yards. West Georgia marches their offense out on the field, and that's really a huge stop by that West Georgia defense on the last possession, as now we have the Black Swarm defense out there getting ready to hope, hopefully they can, or excuse me, they're hoping that they can shut this West Georgia offense down as West Georgia is now in a shotgun formation, which they haven't done too much of here tonight. Gardner's back there and he's reading the defense. He takes the snap and he's gonna hand it off to Franks who's got a hole and he's gonna use those wheels to zoom through that hole and he's gonna get up to about the 25, 26 yard line. Good gain on the play. Great gain on the play. As you can see here, the linemen get up field in the zone technique. They make great blocks and when you get to that second level, once again, that's four yards for the running back to pick up. West Georgia breaks the huddle. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Look for Valdosta State to possibly blitz here and get in the grill of Will Gardner. As Gardner's in a pistol style formation and he takes the snap and he's gonna hand it off to his running back who's gonna make one man miss, but then he's gonna be met by a bunch of black shirts just shy of the 30 yard line and it's gonna be third down for the Wolves. It seems like a third and short. Oh, nope, actually it is a first down on that play. He got a feeling, and got enough yards to get that first down right there. And as you can see, they brought an extra man in, but on, instead of him being in the backfield landing, they put him on the line as a tight end to maybe secure an extra block to give them the, those extra three to four yards they picked up right there. And that's exactly what West Georgia needed. Get a little more, get some confidence back into these offensive players as they've been trying to move the ball down the field all night long. And a lot of times they've squandered it really for themselves with overthrown balls and just passes that haven't been caught as we now have a flag on the play. And I believe this is gonna be a false start against the West Georgia Wolves, Kawan. I agree. It's probably on the running back, LaMarcus Franks. He moved a little earlier on that play. Sometimes you just gotta hold your water in these situations. No reason to jump early, you know the, you know the snap count, you gotta relax. So that will put the ball on the 24 yard line and it is now first and 15 for the West Georgia Wolves. And I've said it a million times, West Georgia continues to shoot themselves in the foot with things that are killing their drives as Gardner's gonna fake the handoff and he's gonna step up and he's gonna throw the ball down the field to a man that seems to be covered but not covered well enough as that's number f as, as that's number five, uh, Danico Carter, the, the big six foot five, 172 pound receiver. Yeah, they set up that play action run because they knew that they had been running, so they baited the, t the defense and threw it over top deep to Danico Carter, who is a big six five receiver. All you gotta do is throw it up to those type guys, and hopefully they make a play. And usually they do because of their height. Huge play for the West Georgia Wolves as they're now in Valdosta State Blazer territory and it's still a close game here. The score 35 to 27 as Gardner and the Wolves break the huddle and they're going to line up in an I formation and Kawan look for a play action pass here as they want to make they want to make the defense think they're going to run the ball but indeed they are going to run the ball as it's just straight up the middle and those plays Kawan are really it's really like a boxing match in the sense that when you run those short run plays it's really jab 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 before you hit him with the big play over the top as we saw with uh with carter earlier and i agree this is this is more of a fill your opponent out to trying to get them thinking of something coming but counter with something else when they don't expect it coming and that's when football becomes a game of chess folks yes it does single back formation for the wolves Gardner takes the snap and it's another handoff to Franks, but this time Franks is going to be met close to the original, close to the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of about a yard, and that will be third down for the Wolves. And number 99, Guito Elvilius, makes an amazing play. You see here he crashes down, jumps on the running back, and saves a big, big 
three to four yards that could have been gained on that play. Well, West Georgia may or may not be in field goal territory. We haven't seen too many field goal attempts from the kicker that they're using right now, but we do know that they've been struggling in that aspect of their game. So they'll definitely want to try to get in the end zone here as that is a toss play to LaMarcus Franks who makes two men miss, but it doesn't matter as that Black Swarm defense is all over him and it's going to be a fourth down for the Wolves. Fourth down, and now we see what Coach Hall has the idea what he's going to do. As you can see here, they set up in like a, say, a option. Either the quarterback could have kept it or pitched it off, and he pitched it off. And he thought he saw a read where maybe he could, where maybe France could make a play, but as you can see, it was no way possible. And they're actually going for it on fourth down here. Very interesting play call decision here, Kawan. And, and now there's a whistle blown by the ref, and we'll see what's going on. They're actually resetting the play clock right now to make sure it's on, on go. And they have reset the play clock, and it is winding down 18, 17 seconds. And interesting call here is we'll see if West Georgia can convert. Gardner takes a snap, and he's looking to pass the ball, and he is going to pass it, and he's going to overthrow his receiver. And this is when hindsight becomes 20-20, and now this is when people start to question why did they go for it there with still plenty of time left here in this fourth quarter and not a very big margin As you can score. see here, they lined up in like a trip set. They throw it over the middle. Really, I think that was an in route, but he did not run the route correctly, and it was a bad throw by the quarterback. So it's set up for a first down for the Blazers, and the reason they did not – they didn't go for or did not kick at that time was because I think he doesn't trust his kicker. And, and, and it's I, showing. And I talked about that earlier, Kawan. The field goal, the, as good as the special teams unit is for the West Georgia Wolves, the field goal unit is really where it counts in a lot of aspects for special teams. And their field goal unit has really not been up to par for the most part this season. And you said it. I don't think the coach necessarily has a lot of confidence in his kicker, and now it's a turnover on downs, and Adam Robles and the Blazers take over at the 29-yard line. Robles takes the snap, and he hands off to Hollingshed, and Hollingshed is just going to run straight up the middle, and he's going to get about three or four yards on the play. Another great pickup by Hollingshed. Great blocks up front. Opens it up for a great run by Hollingshed. And West Georgia comes into this game. We talked about it earlier real, back in the first quarter that West Georgia's defense is averaging about 14 points a game. But if I'm not mistaken, this defense hasn't hasn't put up one point tonight so far, Kawan. Yeah, that's, that's really shocking because this defense is known for putting up points. Hollingshed takes the handoff again, and he's going to run it up the middle, and he's going to be met by a bunch of white shirts, and that's going to go for no gain. And I can see that, and it's starting to make me wonder, are they going for a more conservative approach to this game now? Because they are up by eight points, and they feel like their defense are making the great plays, so they have more trust in their defense than in their offense, maybe. But it's to be told right now on third and four. Third down situation for the Blazers as it's third and four to go with the ball on the 35-yard line, and we'll see – what the Blazers want to do here, they have the lead and they're keeping the clock winding it looks like, but it is going to be a pass play and Robles is going to fire and that's just going to slip through the hands of the wide receiver and that's number 84, Chris Berry, um, trying, to re trying to receive that ball. 5'10", Chris Berry, you must make that catch. This is a big game and in big games, what do you have to do? Make big catches. That's right, you got to make big plays. And that is a fourth down. But unlike West Georgia, Valdosta State is going to punt this ball away. And, I mean, this, of course, is the right call. And at least I think we both can agree on that. They have the lead, and there's a lot of football left to be played. It is. The punt unit shifts slightly before the snap is taken. And the snap is taken, and the punter is going to kick this away. And it's going to be a decent punt down to about the 17, 18 yard line. And that's going to be caught. And he's going to be brought down right there as that punt return goes for maybe two or three yards as there's some shoving down on the field between both units. And that seemed to be Thomas Wright with the great tackle. Hey, he fought through the whole way. He came down, flew down, he broke down. Even though he was stopped in the back, he made sure he got up field and come to be a part of the tackle, actually. And that was number 20, the running back making the tackle. That's how you know this leadership is key. And they want the best players on the field at all times to make the best plays. Because you know, in these situations, if you can make these plays, you put your team in a great position 
to win this game. And that's not something you see very often, Kawan. You couldn't make that up in a video game. And that is true. West Georgia takes over on the 22-yard line in a single back formation. Gardner's going to hand the ball off, and that's going to go for a pretty decent gain of about five, five or six yards, and it's going to be second down for the Wolves. And in for the first time comes the front thing. And we can see here, running back catches, the, get the ball. He runs it off off to the tackle and the guard that's pulling. Good six to seven yard pickup. And Landon, I just saw Devontae Jackson enter the game. So here we go. Here we Look go. For something amazing to happen. Mr. Jackson is on the field now. And we'll look to see if West Georgia wants to get him involved here in this fourth quarter as the clock is ticking down. Gardner takes the snap, and it is a handoff. And that is going to go for a pretty good gain, and that's going to be close to a first down. And in, I believe it is going to be a first down, and it is. It is. Great blocks up front. As you can see here, great blocks up front. The guard pulls, and there's nothing but hole for him to hit. He runs into his own man, but makes a great cut up. I actually got a chance to see Devontae Jackson in high school, landing up in Willow High School in Marietta, so? Georgia. And he was pretty nice when I saw him, but he was only a junior and getting a lot of touches. How about that? And here he is at the next level playing at West Georgia and really making an impact for this offense as he's in the backfield again. Gardner takes a snap, and it's going to be a fake handoff to Jackson. And Gardner's in trouble as he's under pressure, and he's going to get rid of it, and that is going to be deflected, and it looked like that was going to be picked off by the defensive back. Yeah, but I guess that's why he's a defensive back and not a wide receiver. He has to make that play. And as you can see here, the V-State defense creates a lot of pressure. They push him inside. He did make one man miss, but number seven makes sure he puts him under duress. Number 14 almost pulls off an interception, but he can't hold on to the ball. Second down and 10 situation for the Wolves. As it looks like LaMarcus Franks has come back into the backfield for the West Georgia Wolves. Two receivers at the top, one to the near side. Gardner takes a snap, and he's looking. And he's going to throw down the middle, and he has a man, but he's over. it's overthrown, and it's almost picked off by number 14, and that's Brandon Rowe on the coverage. Hey, these second, this secondary is flying around. As you can see here, they go with a, just a drop back. It's a great pressure by number seven, but he throws over the middle of the field, uh, almost picked off, and it seemed like a tip drill, and I thought he was going to pick it off, but he didn't, and it's okay because it's third and long for these Wolves, and I want to see what the Black Swarm is going to do in this situation. And Raymond Palmer was covering the receiver there, and, and that was, excuse me, that was... I'm sorry, the name escapes me right now. But nonetheless, great coverage by the Black Swarm defense. And there is going to be a flag on the play, and we'll see what the refs want to call it here, as it may, in fact, be a false start penalty or a delay of game as the play clock is reading zero right now. It is a false start against West Georgia. And what I'm wondering now is this fan base of the Valor State Blazers putting a lot of pressure on Will Gardner. Is, are they affecting his time and his head and his snap count? I really don't know, but it's working. <laughs> We've seen that a couple times tonight, just simple miscues on the offense, and it's hurting them. And they've been on this side of the field for, the, for a while now, folks. It is now a third and a mile for West Georgia. Gardner all alone takes the snap, and he's looking, and he fires, and that is going to be overthrown and picked off. That is Brandon Rowe on the coverage and the interception, and he's going to be shoved out of bounds, and that is going to be a flag, I believe, on West Georgia, and it could be, and it could be for that tackle out of bounds. Here we go again. A bad throw by Will Gardner once again, just forced it up into traffic, and my man sat back there and waited for it like it was a punt return. He took off with it. And just a late hit by number, it seemed to be nine, drug him all, number five, and Nico Carter drug him all the way to the sideline. Didn't have to do that, but he did. There's no penalty on the play. Valdosta State will take over first and 10 at the 26-yard line. And we just got news that Ladarius Gallion, the injured defensive tackle for the West Georgia Wolves, indeed will not be returning for this game. As he has been ruled out, we do not know details on his injury, but we do know that he will not be returning for this game, and we hope that that young man is all right. We do, but we do know now that that is a big blow to a group 
who actually depended on him a lot to make a lot of plays up middle. But now we will see who will fill his spot and maybe the next man step up in this situation. And look at here, Roland Rivers is back on the field. And it seems, so to speak, that the dead has risen. And Rivers is now back on the field, and he's going to try to run it up the middle, but that's going nowhere for no gain. And just like that, Roland Rivers, he's back in this game. Hey, Houdini, because he <laughs> came out of nowhere, to be honest. But on this play, it really didn't work out too fine for him. The blocks weren't set. Number 69 really didn't get around quick enough. It was up to me. But it's uh, actually a, a loss on the play because of 69 not getting around quick enough and making that key block there. West Georgia conserving their timeouts here. Well, really, both teams are, but more specifically, West Georgia, because they're down right now, conserving their timeouts right now, and I like it. There's still four minutes and 40 seconds roughly left here in this game, and that's going to be a timeout taken by Valdosta State, and I don't know if that was maybe some miscommunication or if it was a play clock issue. I'm not sure, Kwan. Uh, actually, I could see the play clock winding down, and he did, couldn't really keep up with it, but I'm glad he saw it and made a smart decision by calling a timeout for his team. And as odd as that was, do you have an interest in the paranormal? Want a show that is offbeat, not stuffy? Then BSU TV has the program for you. 30-odd minutes airing Saturday nights at 11 p.m. following Saturday Fright Special. If the truth is out there, 30-odd minutes will find it, but only by sheer accident. And Landon, I would like to let you know this game has been long and it has been good, but that pass rush from West Georgia has not shown up. They have no sacks tonight, which is pretty shocking to me coming in with a talented group. I actually thought number 49, the beast, Dylan Donahue, would have had at least two to three sacks by now, but this offense is doing a great job. Actually, I would say the offensive line is doing a great job. I was about to say, you job. have to credit the big boys up front on that Blazer offensive line, keeping these Wolves at bay really all night long, and as you pointed out in your sack statistic. Both units back on the field. Rivers back there at quarterback still, and Hollingshed in the backfield. Rivers takes the snap, and he's going to fake the handoff to Hollingshed. He's going to try to stiff arm one defender, makes two men miss. And he has a defender jumping on his back, and that is a great run for Roland oh, Rivers, and that is going to be a Blazer first down to about the 19-yard line. And that's what the Blazers needed right here in this situation. As you can see, the man pulls. He makes a great read when Donahue makes misses. He makes Donahue miss on top of that, and then gets up field for the first down and makes a man jump on his back. And that's, and that's number seven, Ja'Kiran Young. Ja'Kiran Young that makes the tackle on Roland Rivers. Number 57, Brandon Kemp, the tight end. Uh, he's listed as a tight end to be exact, but they have him at left tackle. He's having an amazing, amazing game tonight. He's only a freshman. How about that? And that is a big man for a freshman, ladies and gentlemen. Rivers takes the snap, fakes the handoff, and he's just going to be swallowed up in the backfield. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication there. And flags are flying now. And is this unsportsmanlike conduct again, Kawan? It is. They're getting chippy. It's getting late in the game. So guess what? The more late it is in the game, the closer the game is, the more chippy it's going to be out there. They're all heated. They want to win this game. Really, the Wolves want the ball back for their offense so they can get an opportunity to tie this game up. What's interesting about these penalties is that every time these flags fly, the clock stops. Yeah. And that benefits West Georgia. It does. So the, it, it makes that dynamic very interesting for this game. And we'll have to see what the actual head referee says. Unsportsmanlike conduct, charge to Valdosta State. And it's going to go against the Blazers. And that is just and that is just a boneheaded mental error. Kawan. Can make these mental errors, mental errors against this team. They will try to try to capitalize off this, all this error. But we shall see on this second down call. And it is second down for the Blazer offense. And they have a long ways to go as it is now second down and, tw and 28 to go with the ball on the 32 yard line. Rivers back in the shotgun with Hollingshed to his left. Rivers takes the snap, fakes it to Hollingshed and then he's gonna run out of the pocket and he's gonna take off to the left and he's going to turn it upfield, and he's going to get a decent gain there. And he, and he's going to be just shy, I believe, of the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, as you can see here on the replay, 
everything breaks down. There's nothing open at all. So what he does is he takes it upfield, picks up as many yards as he can, and almost got back to the line of scrimmage there, Landon. Still a long ways to go as it is third down and 19 yards to go. Dallas Baldner lining up to the near, on the near side of the screen, possibly getting him involved as the defensive back is not very tight on him right now. And we know Dallas Baldner has the speed to get into the open spaces. And yeah, this is true. Three receivers near side, one far side. Rivers takes the snap and he's gonna take off up the middle and he is going to be, and he's gonna be stuffed right there again. And they're running a lot of these plays up the middle now. Kawan, do you think it's an, an effort to grind that clock down? It is an effort to grind the clock down, but I don't think it's a great decision in who they're running it with, knowing that Roland Rivers just got back into the game. You don't want to see him come out. But as you can see on the replay, it is a pass play, but it, it was set up to be more of a pass draw, so it was a fake, and then he takes off running. But they couldn't hold their blocks. And number 49, Dylan Donahue wants to get down there trying to make a play finally, trying to get his name acknowledged up here. And the Blazers, I believe, are in field goal range if they decide to do that with it being fourth down and 21 yards to go with the ball on the 25-yard line. And we'll see what the Blazers want to do as far as maybe kicking a field goal. And I'm sure that's what they will do as there are still timeouts on the board for the West Georgia Wolves, and if you try to run a play here to run the clock down, they'll just use those timeouts. So if you're Valdosta State here, you're definitely wanting to take as many points as you can. And if you take these, and if you take these points and you get a field goal, you make it a two-possession game. And a two-possession game is what you need against these Wolves, because I've seen them last week against North Alabama drive all the way down the field with a two with two minutes remaining. So it's possible. So what you want to do is make this field goal to take them out of range to tie this game up on the next possession. And Andrew Gray is out there once again for the Valdosta State Blazers, and he's getting ready to an attempt a field goal here. It looks to be about a 30, 37, 36 yard field goal, roughly. And the kick is up, and the kick is good. Is good. And that is Andrew Gray coming in the clutch there, and that makes this a two-possession ball game as the score is now 38-27 to 27 Blazers. And as good as what they needed. That was there was a statement. As you can see on the replay, of course, he lines it up, get the perfect kickoff right down the middle of the uprights. And that's going to please the home, Valdosta, the home team, Valdosta State Blazer fans, as they, they look to be having a party over there with what they're doing. Two minutes away from an upset, mm. a big upset. Because guess what? Coming into this game, most people counted Valdosta out, actually. Expect this game to be probably a 10 to 15 point difference. But guess what? These Blazers are holding on and they're fighting for dear life to keep these West Georgia Wolves from coming back in these last two minutes and 41 seconds. And I think in a lot of aspects you can say that this Blazer team is a different team from when they played North Alabama. Because, I mean, everyone, Everyone here knows that the showing that they had against the North Alabama Lions was simply not acceptable, especially for a team such a team with such a tradition as the Valdosta State Blazers. And then West Georgia putting up the fight that they did against North Alabama. And we know that that was kind of the big storyline heading into this game. And now here we are with over two minutes left in the fourth quarter, and the Blazers are up 38-27. to 27. Now, it's not over by any stretch of the imagination. That's true. This is football, and we know how crazy football can be. Very. But it alludes to what you said. It's interesting because a lot of people counted out the Blazers in this game, they even did. if they were at home, and even because of the poor showing against North Alabama and with the showing that even though West Georgia lost, they had a better showing against the Lions than the Blazers did as Andrew Gray kicks this ball off to West Georgia, and it's going to be a, a rolling kick to almost the 20-yard line that's going to be picked up, and that is going to be met with a huge hit at about the 37-yard line, and that is where West Georgia will prepare to set up their offense and try to score it. As you can see on the replay, he comes down and gets up field quickly as possible, but met him solidly at the about the 36, 37-yard line. So the ball's on the 36-yard line, and it's going to be a first down here for West Georgia. 
as West Georgia is going to bring LaMarcus Franks out on the field at the running back position. And we saw a little bit of Devontae Jackson earlier, but not much as Franks is back out there on the field. And at this point, if you're West Georgia, you're passing the ball. I mean, you're down by two possessions. That is true. Two receivers up top, two to the near side. Gardner takes the snap, and he's looking, and he's going to throw a deep ball into what looks like double coverage, and that is going to fall incomplete. And a flag comes out late on the play, and they may get Valdosta State for a pass interference and there, That Kawan. is true, but uh, to me, that was a bad call. The ball, both receivers were fighting for the ball. Really, the ball was out of range for the receiver to catch it. But the official saw something totally different from what I saw up here, and that probably is a pass interference on the play from well, Larry, will be Larry Murphy. And we'll have to see what the refs has to say after meeting with another ref on the field. And it is going to be against Valdosta State. And that's going to be a first down for the West Georgia Wolves as we take another look here. Take another look on the replay. He drops back. It really looked like a holding call, but it wasn't called. He throw it up deep for his receiver. And it really looked like they both made a play on the ball at the same time. I really don't agree with the call from the officials, but they're on the field, and I'm up here for a reason. History is history, and we're at and West Georgia is at midfield, just past the 50-yard line, and they catch a little bit of a break there as they've had a difficult time in the second half moving the ball on offense. Gardner takes the snap, and he drops back, and he's looking. He's looking. He has a pocket, and that's a quick pass to a crossing receiver. That's going to be number 30. That's going to be number 32, Thomas Lester, on the reception. Yep, and number 32, Willie Fletcher on the tackle. As you can see here, Will Gardner drops back. It's a blitz by Valdosta, but one man-to-man -man coverage. Oh, and the ball. And West Georgia hurries up to the line, and it's a fumbled snap as Gardner picks it up and just throws it away. And my, that is a heads-up play by Will Gardner, even if that play was a disaster. It was, it was, because if he didn't get that ball off, I'm pretty sure he'd be somewhere laying on the 35-yard line with the ball or without it. And the Blazers, if without it, of course, the Blazers are going the other way. And if they're going the other way, then that almost certainly puts a nail in the coffin. And that is true. Second down, or excuse me, third down and about seven yards to go. Ball on the 46-yard line. Gardner takes the snap and he drops back. He has a pocket and he throws down the middle and that's going to be LaMarcus Franks, his stud running back on the reception and that's going to be a first down for West Georgia. Actually, it will actually be Quay Walker on the reception. Oh, excuse me, I'm Frank, sorry. But it is fine, Landon. Uh, quick pick up their line though, really fast. Gardner hurries to the line and takes another stab and it's another throw down the middle. But this time that ball is going to fall incomplete trying to target number 14, K.J. Palmer, on that play. Uh, overthrow by a lot. But I think he did that to keep it away, of course, from the defender and put it where only his receiver can get it or nobody can get it in that situation. And not to mention to, keep, to preserve play, to reserve, but excuse me, to preserve game clock because they're down by two possessions here. So they're hoping to get down score and then get the ball back somehow. As Gardner takes a snap and he's looking and he's going to throw, and that is going to be <laughs> that is going to be incomplete, but really should have been picked off by number 14, Brandon Rowe. And he's had and he's had quite a few great plays tonight. Quite a game. Will Gardner draws back, of course. They send another delay blitz. Comes right at his hands. And that situation, you got to make a play because if you make a play, this is the ball game, and that would probably be the end of the ball game. And they would try to run the clock out. Big third down for West Georgia. And if they can't convert on these last two downs, then I think it's safe to say it's probably over, partner, but we'll have to see what West Georgia does here. Gardner takes the snap. He drops back. He's got some time, and he's going to throw. And the receiver almost breaks away from his defender, but he does not, as that is going to fall short of the first down, and it's going to be a fourth down and short for West Georgia, and this is very interesting. This is the game right here. It is, and that was a great open field tackle by Kenny Murphy. Kenny Moore, I'm Clock sorry. is running, and the refs blow the play dead as it looks like it's going to be a timeout by Austin State. Actually, a very smart timeout by, by Austin State to kind of see what the West Georgia was going to line up in. And you can see here on the play, Will Gardner drops back. They send another delay blitz as they've been doing all night. Open field tackle by Kenny Moore. A great open field tackle by Kenny Moore because if he lets that kid go, 
that's probably a touchdown on that play, to be honest, as it was a man coverage up under and zone on, at the top of the, of the field. And what makes this next play call so difficult for West Georgia is, although they've had some success here and there offensively throughout the night, this in this second half, there hasn't been many holes in this Valdosta State defense, and you're trying to figure out what kind of play call you can dial up to get past this black swarm defense, especially here with the game on the line and it being fourth down. And I would like to say this secondary has stepped up big today. A lot of man-to-man -man coverages, they're in your face, and they're making sure if you go that way, I'm going that way with you, and they're going to make the field tackle. And this is the ball game. If West Georgia cannot convert on this fourth down, ladies and gentlemen, the West Georgia fans are on their feet, and so are the Valdosta State fans. As Will Gardner is lined up and ready to take the snap, and he does, and he drops back, and he's looking, and he's going to fire, and his receiver is simply going to drop the ball, and that is going to be a turnover. And unless a miracle happens, Kawan, it looks like this game is going to be over. It is. It seems to be probably over. As you can see here on the replay, he drops back. Everything seemed like it worked. They did an end pattern with the slot receiver. He drops the ball. It has to make that catch in that situation. That's number 14, KJ Palmer. KJ Palmer, excuse me. And they've used him a lot in other games, and he's made big plays in that situation. He didn't make that big play. And because of that, it seems like these Wolves are probably going to take a loss today. Well, to get big victories, you have to make big plays. And unfortunately, Palmer was, well, unfortunately, Palmer fell short there and simply couldn't get hands on the ball. And Valdosta State will take over with a minute 20 left. And I mean, I think you know as, as much as well as I do that they're just going to run the clock out at this point. And that's true. I know Colonel Bell's on the sideline, probably extremely excited and probably extremely happy to get this big win against the in this rival game. And also, stamp his name in history. And we'll see how Valdosta State handles this minute and 20 seconds left here on the clock as they still line up in a shotgun formation, and that's going to be a handoff to Hollingshed up the middle, and they're just going to run the – and it looks like they're just going to run this game clock out. Run the game clock out and hold on to the ball. And West Georgia is going to take a timeout, and, I mean, why not? They have plenty of timeouts. It is a two-possession game, and this has been a very competitive game here tonight, Kawan, and we've seen a couple plays get rather chippy, and I think that's just a testament to the emotion that was taking place not only before the game, but, you know, during the game and then in the last minutes of this game. And that's true. These two teams have went at it hard all night, and they really haven't let up the pedal on either team, to be honest. All players are giving their all on the field. They're really leaving it on the field, and... To say, sad to say for the Wolves, it wasn't enough tonight because these Blazers have been outstanding. They have played with a lot of resilience, and they also have competed at a high level against this group of group of um, group of Wolves here. Trust me, this defense is amazing, and to hold this defense to what they've done tonight, that's a beautiful thing for this offense. Well, if the result stands, which I'm, we're both sure it will, the West Georgia Wolves will fall to their second loss in the Gulf South Conference. And that's really is gonna put them behind. And of course, Valdosta State is gonna gain a win in the win column for the Gulf South Conference. And just trying to keep playoff hopes alive as Rivers is gonna to toss this ball to his fullback. And he's gonna be brought down at about the 25 yard line. And it looks to be no gain on the play. A great catch by number 46. Tajay Dennis, and it was a good catch. Actually, it was needed because it, as you can see here, it play action fake comes out a little slip. Actually, thought he would pick up more yards, but they diagnosed the play. And great tackle. But if he drops that ball, that stops the clock. So that's a great catch by him to keep this clock running. And I'm pretty sure just looking at this West Georgia defense, they're getting sick of being out there, and they're just done with this because that's two weeks in a row. Their offense has failed them in some type of way. And this defense has pulled through from time to time. But tonight, they didn't. And on that last play, it looked like the ball was tipped in the air by the West Georgia defender, which really makes that catch really interesting and makes you wonder how the ball even got through there. Just over a minute left here in the fourth quarter at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. It's been a great game for the most part. Beautiful night here in Valdosta, Georgia as the Blazers once again set up on offense and they're just trying to wind this clock down and get out of here with the W. It'll be third down and nine to go, ball on the 25 yard line. 
Rivers is in there at quarterback. And he's just going to hand it off to Hollingshed, who's going to lower his head and churn those big legs up the middle and get a gain of about three or four yards and get that game clock running as West Georgia now has no more timeouts, so the clock will run. And it will not stop. And I'm glad that Kerwin Bell got to, to a chance to talk to all his players on the sideline probably and let them know to be composed and very disciplined at this time because any – unsportsmanlike penalty right here could put them in a bad situation where they won't get an opportunity to play next week. Play clock running just under 30 sec or excuse me, the game clock running just under 30 seconds now as we're getting close to the end of this very exciting rivalry matchup and battle for the Peach Basket Trophy, which the Blazers will be walking out of here with tonight. And I'm sure Kerwin Bell and the Blazer Nation are very excited about that. Very excited to stay in the division race because without this win today it's not possible blazers using one of their timeouts just before the play clock hits zero trying to run off as much clock as they can just to get out of here so now for the blazers later on down the season i guess they we look for to keep winning and well, probably, sure. probably a north alabama loss somewhere down the line we probably don't know where it's coming or if it will come, but that's what they need to be on, at top of the division or maybe contend. Blazers getting ready to punt this ball away, and we'll see if West Georgia can cook up something here with their special teams unit. And it's a modest punt close to the 40-yard line, and it's caught. And he's going to run it out, and he's going to be brought down around midfield. And that's number 43, Thomas Wright, who brings the re who brings the return man down close to midfield. And with eight seconds left, West Georgia has time for one play, maybe two. In this situation, as a coach, I knew the ball to stop animosity and stop these players from going at it on the field. Even though I'm pretty sure Corrin told his players, "Do not react to the situation." But it's possible. I've seen it happen. I've seen brawls. I've been a part of them, sad to say. Mm. And we don't want to see one tonight. We want mm. this to end fair. And with no pushing or shoving, this is a nice, good game. And it was good to play tonight. <laughs> well, it indeed has been a great game. But they're definitely not going to kneel the ball, Kawan, as they roll out a shotgun package here. And Gardner's going to take the snap. And I think he's just going to throw the ball down the field and see what he can do. And he is indeed going to throw a bomb. And it's going to be into triple coverage. And that's simply going to be picked off. And that is going to end the game. That will do it for us here at Baysmore Hyder Stadium. Your final score is Valdosta State 38 and West Georgia 27. For Kawan Cook and everyone here at VSU TV, I'm Landon Luke. Have a wonderful night.